I'd like to welcome you to the May 24th meeting of the Blackstone Millville Regional District School Committee. And I invite everyone to stand and join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, to and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and we'll start with an introduction of our members. Sarah Williams, Blackstone. Karen Vernon, Millville. Jack Keith, Blackstone. Jane Reggio, Millville. Erin Bonacco, Millville. Tara Larkin, Millville. Tammy Lemieux, Blackstone. Bethany Dunton, Blackstone. Anita Lehew, former student council president. Jenna Castellucho, student council president. Danielle Catalano, student council vice president. Alan Himmelberger, superintendent. And that's my She doesn't want it. <laughs> and the report of our student, our student representative with a few new representatives. Yes, passing the torch. All right, so this year is beginning to wind down at BMR. Our spring sports season is coming to a close with many teams having their senior games around this time. Um, the senior games are all home games at BMR that are just meant to celebrate the final home games of our senior athletes and recognize the work and dedication that they've given to their respective activities. Uh, varsity softball and baseball both had their senior games this afternoon, as did our lacrosse co-op with Hopedale. Boys tennis had theirs yesterday afternoon, and girls tennis will celebrate their seniors this Friday. Uh, we wish the best of luck to our Charger athletes as spring sports come to a close. Um, AP weeks and are finally complete, and we are now finishing up with senior exams and math MCAS testing for sophomores. Final exams for all non-seniors will be held the week of June 20th to 25th, and students have the ability to be exempt from their final exams if, they, um, if their grades and absences meet the given requirement. So we know that many of our students are working hard to get exempt from those exams and get an early start on summer. National Honor Society held its induction last Wednesday for the 2018-2019 school year. We are very excited to, for the many students who were inducted this past Wednesday and for those who were elected for officer positions for the upcoming year. The officers for National Honor Society are President Haley Gervais, Vice President Megan Broder, Secretary Michaela Martinelli, Treasurer Cameron Sarandolo, and Historian Jenna Gauthier. Um, so congratulations to them and all of our new inductees and best of luck to them in the upcoming year. And Student Council also had our final meeting last night where elections for the 2018-2019 school year were held. Um, I am so proud and excited to announce our executive board for next year. President Jenna Castelluccio, Vice President Danielle Catalano, Secretary Jacob Chaplin, Treasurer Ethan Stearman, Historian Brooke Cagini, Public Relations Cassandra DeMott, and Solicitor Susana Valdez. Um, and I congratulate them and wish them the best of luck next year as well. Next week is senior week. Um, the class of 2018 will be having our class trip to High Meadows Resort in North Granby, Connecticut next Tuesday, May 26th. Our senior banquet will be held on Wednesday evening at River Falls in Woonsocket. And our awards night will be held in the BMR Auditorium on Thursday evening. Um, during these few days, there will also be graduation rehearsals for seniors as well in the morning. And the graduation ceremony will be held on Friday, June 1st. And with Mother's, Mother Nature's cooperation, um, hopefully at the front steps of BMR High School. Um, I know I speak for all of my classmates in saying that as ready as we are for this next chapter, we are all going in the direction of our dreams because of the experiences and support that we had from this district. Um, four years really did go by fast. Um, and this will be my last meeting updating all of you on the exciting happenings of BMR, uh, as I am now passing the torch to Jenna and Danielle. Um, so thank you for the opportunity to be involved with school committee this year. I wish both of them the best of luck as they take over. Um, and before I go, I would just like to speak on the matters of tonight's meeting. Um, although my time at BMR is up, I am who I am today because of the opportunities I was granted through the many programs that we offer at BMR. To see these go would be devastating, and I would you would truly be taking opportunities away from the students of our district. 
Um, I will not be affected by what happens here tonight, but there are thousands of students in this district who will be. And I hope more than anything that our schools will continue to be a place of opportunity and growth for our students. So thank you all so much. Well, thank you. Any, don't go alone. Any questions for any of Well, I'm sorry Jessica could not join us, but. Did we already announce where Anita chose for school publicly? Um, Want to tell us? I don't know, maybe not. Um, in the, <laughs> in the fall, I will be attending Salve Regina University for secondary education in English. Awesome. Thank you. So possibly coming back to us. Possibly. <laughs> well, that would be Very wonderful. Good. And for all you have done, we cannot thank you. Thank you so much. Because it's not four years. It's been a lot longer than True. that. Thank you. Ask a Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Danielle and Jenna, we look forward to learning what you have to tell us. Thank you. How Thank many you. more days till you graduate? Best of luck. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Opportunity for public forum. So it won't make a noise. It'll just pick up on the recording. So, <laughs> well, Jesse, you'll run out quickly. Yeah. Sorry. So, um, I wanted to get up and talk a little bit as a parent. My name is Kathy Stearman. I have a sophomore and an eighth grader. I'm very, very worried about the budget. I, I know cuts need to be made. I'm just afraid that they're going to be made. I can't think of the words to not hurt the school. I know that nobody sets out to hurt the school, but to not move us forward. Both my children are a huge part of the band. Even my eighth grader who's going into ninth grade is a huge part of the band. He chose to stay at BMR because of the band. Multiple other parents I've talked to applied or didn't apply based upon what we offered. Sports, band, AP courses, whatever it is, I hope that we can keep as much as we can to keep our students here. I'm also the treasurer of the BMMA, the Blackstone Millville Music Association. Um, this is Lisa Gervais, the president, and we wanted to speak to you a little bit from our point of view of the BMMA being the parents organization of the music association. I do have some numbers here that I can share with you for what we put out in expenditures, um, but I did write down a few words I'd like to say. I did write them down because I knew I would forget sitting in front of all of you, so please excuse me for reading versus speaking. Um, my reason for coming tonight is threefold. I am an alumni of this music program as well as my husband. I can also include the majority of my high school friends. My husband marched in the Macy's Day Parade. We both marched in the Rose Bowl Parade. and both marched in the Rose Bowl Parade as well as the Thanksgiving Day Parade in Philadelphia, creating lifelong memories we both cherish. I am now a parent of four children from fifth grade to 11th grade, all of whom are in the music program. They were just able to travel to Nashville to march in that city's Christmas parade. Two of my children are seriously seeking out careers in music with more cuts to the program and less music activities to participate in. Their college opportunities will be less than that of their peers from other systems. Kids lose out on instruction and direction when these cuts are made. I am the president of the Blackstone Millville Music Association. I can honestly say we cannot financially make up for the cuts that are being proposed. We have parents donating hours and hours of their time to already support cuts made in the past. $25,000 of monies earned goes to pay for staffing because stipends can't cover, over $2,000 for transportation. Not only do we contribute to covering cuts, we like to focus on the kids as well, giving out scholarships to outgoing seniors and summer camp and private lesson scholarship to those remaining in the system. Being on the scholarship committee, I can tell you that we have had to decrease the amount we give out from $5,000 in past years 
down to $2,000 the past few years because of budget cuts and BMMA picking up the slack. This amount of money requires many hours of planning, many people donating hours of their time willingly. We are so fortunate to have families, past alumni, community members support us. Dan Keefe, BMR Music alumni, ran a fundraiser for us that took in over $4,000. Not only do they support us financially, but through coming to our concerts, performances, to see and hear our student program, students perform. Last night, the auditorium fitting 590 people was almost filled to capacity with those supporting our kids. We have had 1,200 people at our marching band home show for years. Our students donate time to support their programs as well, many coming to work at the annual craft fair, many coming the day after prom this year to help run the Central District concert we hosted. They are in the process of learning how to run a blood drive we have annually, annually dedicated to the parents of one of our, of our alumni, proving that we are not only visible members of the school community, but the community as a whole. We have multiple children who choice in for our award-winning program because we are so visible and known. I have had many disappointed parents approach me because of our middle school marching band being cut and being unable to participate in parades this year. I would hate to have to explain more cuts and our inability to provide funds for those cuts. Thank you. We do have a paper that shows a breakdown of a large part of our expenses for the last year. It's not a complete list, but it's the heavy hitters. Could I pass it out? Absolutely. from last night, middle school, um, and it was the sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. questions I don't know if that's now the uh, appropriate time so in, in public forum we listen okay and okay. and take into account okay. what you have to say and um, I, there. I don't I, would you want to make a comment if you wanna... only if you let me yeah <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, it was me on May 9th at a joint meeting who threw out what if we had to cut music and athletics? At that meeting, the school committee, along with every other person around the table, was vehemently in favor of keeping music and athletics. We have not proposed eliminating the music program. Since the day I arrived, I have supported the band and all of the music that we do in all of our schools. And we know what it means to families. We know what it means to students. We know what it means to staff. And so um, we are looking at everything. We know that we have a difficult job because we, we didn't start with a, a budget that was top heavy. We're starting with a budget that barely meets our needs this year. And to reduce 7.5% of that, um, there are prob there's probably no other district in the state that's facing a budget reduction of this size. The mission, I believe, is that we hope that the towns can find their footing and in a year be ready to restore the needs that this district has. But in, in certainly in my time, I mean, Mr. Schaefer has given me a closet full of t-shirts and I, I wear them proudly. So I think I speak for the committee, but I speak for everyone here and everyone that was at that meeting on May 9th, the joint meeting of all towns, both towns and all of the board members, that we are dedicated to the proposition of keeping the music program. And I think that that is, I speak for everybody here, that that is integral to what our mission is and students learn 
by playing music and 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 become better at everything else because of it. So I just wanted to to clarify that for all of you and, and to to reassure you that we're going to do everything possible to to preserve that important tradition and have it available for our students in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Uh, no, you have the number of transportation. <clears throat> Can we just make sure we have another public comment after? I have uh, been asked to um, change our, the order of our agenda, uh, so I will entertain that idea from the committee, if you would like to move the budget <coughs> discussion, uh, FY19 budget discussion update forward. I motion to move the um, fiscal year budget update forward and include a public forum after that. After that In piece or at the end of the? At the end budget. of the budget. Is that okay? Because I, my, my theory is that for many people to sit through school improvement and handbooks and all of that. We don't want to tire. I don't, I don't know. But again, people can say no. How about we do one of those things at a time? So we can just do this. Okay. Thing. Move to move the budget forward. Second. Discussion forward. And then a second motion for public forum. Let's do one motion at a time. Yeah. Let's so have on. the discussion and then have the motion. Right. So there's a motion on the table to move the budget. Forward. Yep. Update forward. Second. Second. Is there any discussion on that? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All, any opposed? Okay. Now, you can do the other one. So a motion to add a public forum after our budget discussion. Second. And you, uh, there's a motion to have a second uh, public forum after the discussion on budget. Is uh, any <coughs> discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, so we will begin our discussion on the FY19 uh, budget. We don't have Wen here, and she's going to answer a lot of our questions. So uh -huh. <laughs> is she on her way? Yes. Okay. So we may, uh, we, we can start with my topic number one anyway, and, and then we can um, hope that, that she will come in the meantime. Um, so we know that Millville had its meeting on um, May 14th uh, and voted that if there was an override to support the school budget at um, a 2.04% increase over last year or 3% of the supplemental investment. Um, if there was an override. Millville did not vote on a non-override budget, but the same budget amount was listed um, for the school committee in the non-override budget. I have received assurances from the um, chair of the finance committee and the town administrator and uh, a member of the Board of Selectmen who was there when I was talking to uh, the Finance Committee Chair that um, they are committed to meeting that amount override or no override. Uh, so that begs the question in going to Blackstone's meeting on the 29th what this committee wants to do in terms of um, looking at the Finance Committee recommendation which increases that budget amount in Blackstone by $100,000 or keeping the Board of Selectmen's recommendation, which matches the Millville recommendation. It's still off by $3,000. No, it was corrected. Mm -hmm. it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my question is, what does what can our committee do? They're going to bring both in, they're going to bring that to their town floor. Are you saying, do we want to support the 100,000? Okay. Which ends up 38 to Millville? About 30, not quite 39. The, the, 
if if Blackstone votes the higher amount, then we will we are hoping to schedule a meeting on May 30th, which you see is one of these items too. Um, on that May 30th meeting, we can then recertify a different amount. If if Blackstone votes the hundred thousand additional dollars, we can recertify at that amount, meaning we would go back to Millville. Millville has already committed its, I don't know even how to phrase this, but they've already committed their dollars to go back and ask for additional dollars that clearly the town does not have puts the school committee at a disadvantage because their vote to know whether we're going to even get the initial ones is not till June 19th. If there's a meeting scheduled after June 19th and it takes 14 days to call a meeting and we're asking for additional dollars, we're already into July, mm -hmm. which means we do not have a budget to start the fiscal year, which straps a new superintendent coming in. So I guess the question I'm asking is, is it, is it more important to this committee to have $139,000 and follow the process to get that, or is it more important to have a budget number July 1st? What exactly happens if we have no budget on July 1st? It's a one So we operate on one twelfth of the amount that we had this year, which generally means we, we can't enter into any purchase agreements, we can't do a lot of our advanced purchasing, which we don't generally do in July, and it makes it tough to meet the payroll. Is that right? Correct. Enough? Correct. We operated on that last year. Two years ago. Two yes. years ago. And it was tough. And that's why we had the Chromebook initiative, and we did not get the Chromebooks until January, January or February, really, January. we released them. Just as a point of clarification for those watching, um, the regional financing is is challenging to follow, and you have to get really deep into Mass General Laws and Code of Mass Regulations to see how it all plays out. Two years ago, for the FY17 budget, we ended up in that exact predicament, where on June 30th, we didn't have a budget. And the state says, if you don't have a budget on July 1st, then they basically come in and oversee us making sure that we're spending only one twelfth of the prior year's budget. And it is, um, it's not an ideal situation by any stretch. Especially with a new superintendent coming in, there is a tremendous value in having the number um, set by July 1st, whatever that may be. And I think as I was talking to the, the chair of the Board of Selectmen in Millville before the meeting, it's important to make sure that the contingency is covered, meaning you have to post a warrant for 14 days before you can hold a town meeting. And if we had to wait till the 20th to post the warrant, then we would be beyond the July 1st date. So um, if the override does fail, then in fact the town would have to vote their budget and it would, it would be ideal to plan that contingency earlier so that you could then vote on the 20th or 21st in Millville to approve that the whole town's budget. So as the chair had stated, um, the, the extra 139 is not a guarantee, even if Blackstone votes their share that the Finance Committee would like to, to have to go back to Millville for almost 39,000 additional dollars um, has already been stated that that would be uh, a, a huge challenge for Millville. And so I think we will know better after next Tuesday. So all the Blackstone residents, please attend that town meeting on the 29th at 7 o'clock at BMR High School Auditorium. And then we would know from that meeting and have a clearer direction as to what the number would be. Hope that helps. I have a few questions. Yeah. Um, first, we have in our packet n numbers and proposed cuts. Um, is this based on getting the additional 139,000 or not? No, this number 
was conservatively assessed at getting the lower number. The lower number. And it's still, well, we're still 200, and we're still we're $200,000 so, so, And we're go. still $200,000 short. Mm -hmm. And so, again, and I, I have, the, I'm uh, obviously this is my second year going through this process in this position, but I, as a Blackstone taxpayer, continue to have a very difficult time deciding my child's future and these Blackstone parents, whoever is a Blackstone parent's future, um, these kids' futures based on always what Millville is willing or can do in any given year. And so one of my question, an additional question I have is, is it, if, if we stick with the number that is 139,000, 38,000 less, and the override in Millville does not go through, are we still not in an, a position where we can get money anyway? No, so what, I, what was explained to me by both the town administrator and the chairman of the finance committee is that the Millville Board of Selectmen can commit to meeting the school budget. Um, if you go back, I think three years ago or maybe more no it was more because it was when perry. um no it wasn't perry but it was when um some years ago no uh rich Cravello <laughs> was the chair of the finance committee and so blackstone voted an, an additional amount which means we had to get another sixty thousand dollars from millville we went to the board of selectmen to ask for that additional sixty thousand and they had the option to agree to that they eventually had to approve it at their special town meeting in November, um, but they committed to it and we had our budget. So they can do that same thing with committing to the amount in the non-override budget, which is the same amount as the override budget, and then when they do meet to balance their budget, then the, the town members would approve it then, but the town would already be, we would already have our budget and it would already be committed. So the Board of Selectmen has that ability. I, I, I just hate that one town gets to dictate what we have to cut, yet the same residents from that town are frustrated with it and, and they don't want us to cut these numbers, but yet we can't get the maximum amount one of the other, the other town is willing. And that is so frustrating sitting up here that we have to make these difficult cuts that impact our kids when one town is willing to go a little bit more than the other. And I know it fluctuates over years, but um, this is very frustrating. And, and to, to echo what Mrs. Lemieux has said, the state understands that because in the, the state auditor's report last October on regional school districts, the large majority of the regionals are two town regionals. And, she outlined in that report very well um, exactly why it is so difficult to meet um, during a budget cycle. And so that's just inherent in the way the, the laws are written and the way the state funds uh, or doesn't fund regional school districts. So there, uh, there is a lot of, of opportunity to improve both from the, the, the laws that govern us as well as from the state. Anybody else have? I do. Yep. I'm ready. Okay. I was putting my thoughts on paper first. Fair enough. Um, based on what's in front of us in this list, which isn't a, pu a public document, I would say, for, but it's hard to look at. Um, but knowing what's on these sheets here and sitting through both town FinComs and selectmen budget meetings and reviews, neither town had to look at cuts to this magnitude. Even with as, as bad as Millville has it, they weren't talking $1.6 million when they have to make cuts to their budget or reductions. Um, and seeing everything in front of us, and once it is shared, and once residents of both towns know what the impacts are going to be, to the schools, um, 
I, I think we have no choice but to fight for every dollar that is recommended to us at this point because there are things on here for dollars that will equal our 1.6 million. So every dollar or every $39,000 or every $100,000 is going to make this list a little bit easier to look at. Um, I thanked Millville and I appreciated the fact that they even recommended an additional contribution to us for the first time in six years that I have been on this committee. It was the first time we didn't have to fight for it on the town floor and move the money from another line item and be called names. And, and, it, and I'm not saying that wasn't a gracious, you know, movement on their part. And I'm not saying it, and they, they know it's not enough. They know that that gesture was there. They know that even the 39,000 isn't going to make this list a lot better. Um, but still, neither, neither, neither town has to look at a list of over a million dollars in reductions. And I, I, I just think that we have to accept any dollar that is recommended towards our school budget at this point. Um, and, and let's think positive. Maybe Millville is going to get that override on June 19th and their budget will be funded. Um, and, and, and it's not going to be a question of where are they going to get the money. But we, even if that override passes, we still have to do this. They don't, they, they don't, they will have a funded budget. We have to do this to get to a funded budget. And with everything that's on this list and with the, the compassion that we've, we've heard from the band, I'm sure we're gonna hear from other parents, uh, we, have to, we have to fight for, for those dollars. And that's where I stand. I actually, I just want to say one more oh. thing. The the if if it passes in Blackstone, and we recertify, and then we wait for Millville, and whatever happens on June nineteenth happens, we're still going to know by by July. We may not have the money in our bank. We're going to know where we stand. We're going to know what's coming. Um. After that that Millville town meeting. If it doesn't pass in Blackstone, we're going to know at that point where we stand. Wait, because we're I not going to have to go back to Millville. But I'm confused. If it if the override passes No, if our budget passes with the hundred thousand dollars in Blackstone. In Blackstone on Tuesday, we know that we're going back to Millville and we're asking them to put that town meeting in motion before that June nineteenth override. We're not waiting for that to for a special town meeting to be posted. We recertify after Blackstone's town meeting with a lower number. We send it to them as soon as possible, and then it's 14 days to post a town meeting. So, in that meantime, they don't have to wait till after the override. No, vote. they they, I, they I, we're I asking, asking them to post it for us. <laughs> it might actually benefit them if they have to put something else on that special town meeting at a later point. But they should already have it posted for us before June 30th because we recertify after Blackstone's vote. Was there also a term of, don't they have a certain amount of time to decide? Yes, they do. To post it? So we have a certain yes. time to right. notify them. Days or something. We have a certain time to notify them. When they receive the notifi notification at their first official meeting, so they don't have to react to it till they have a meeting, right. then they have so many days to respond, then so many days to post. So we really, if, if we're going to have a meeting next Wednesday, we should really have it on our agenda that we're recertifying no matter what. Because we're going to know what Blackstone okay. outcome is. Okay. Agreed. So next Wednesday, we need to recertify, hopefully to that higher of the number, and then and it gets delivered to Millville on Thursday, and then the, their clock starts for us. And typically that town meeting has been held right at the, last day of school last week that week mm -hmm. it could benefit mobile to have that meeting on the books already though they'll already have their warrant out but they could put something on the warrant and strike it but it could benefit them to have that meeting posted as a special town meeting even pending the outcome of their june 19th ballot 
Just throwing that out there as a salesman. Yeah, when it is a daily, it's always good. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. might need it. <laughs> Jack, Karen, Sarah, comments? No comments? I I agree that we fight for the money. If the money's there, and especially if Blackstone is already willing to, you know, the finance committee is offering an extra hundred thousand dollars after looking at, you know, what we have to deal with, no matter what we are dealing with. Um, we're affecting people's lives, whether it's faculty members, our children, um, you know, people are involved and we need to fight for every penny that we can get. And I think, you know, I, I have um, hope that Dr. DeFalco would understand and realize and if we end up having to start with a budget at 112th. I think that the conversations we had with Millville and Blackstone and everybody who was here at that meeting, I had like 40 people around that huge table. It's It was clear that there's nothing. It's Even if the override passes, they were still in the hole. There's no money left in Millville to get us to that 38. And even if they could certify it at that, we they'd still lose something else. So it's not like it wouldn't have an effect on somebody somewhere in their town on some service. It's... a it's a bad game all around, and I think if we want to, in good faith, work with both towns, then we don't pursue that money. I would like to um, entertain an official stance one way or the other. So if somebody would like to propose something one way or the other. propose it. I'll, I'll make a proposal. I propose that we as a school committee accept the Blackstone Finance Committee's recommendation that an additional $100,000 from Blackstone be allotted to the school committee, our school, Blackstone Millville Regional School District, and therefore the you know that goes through the other side. So can I can I maybe rephrase? Sure. I, so there's a you motion. know what I want. <laughs> there's a motion on the floor to support the Blackstone Finance Committee uh, recommended budget for Blackstone Millville Regional School District. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Any discussion? I just want to point out, as we're all sitting here saying additional hundred thousand, we asked them for one point oh, yeah, nine yeah. million. Yes, 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 yes. And this is this is yes. seven hundred ninety seven thousand dollars was what was recommended by Selectman. Eight hundred ninety seven thousand is what was recommended by FinCom. So it is not even additional money. Correct. We we maybe shouldn't use that word. We're accepting their generous recommendation the of, of eight hundred ninety seven thousand yes. dollars as opposed to seven ninety seven. Yes. As opposed to 1.9 million, which is a huge compromise in Olive Branch to both towns. Is is, is yeah. I see. It's it. a, I mean, imagine Blackstone was sitting here saying they were going to support the 1.9 million. It would be a totally different conversation. We wouldn't have this list in front of us, and we know where. Any Milford other is. discussion? So we have a motion to support the recommendation of the Blackstone Finance Committee. The funding of the Blackstone Millville Regional School District. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Uh, May 30th. So just so folks know, we have um, asked of the leadership team and the administration to give us an idea of where $1.6 million in cuts would come from. Um, they have been hard at work in trying to figure out a plan that um, still meets the needs of our our district mission, that still meets the needs of our students in, in this school district, um, and looks equally across the board at a variety of programs, thinking outside the box, inside the box, and around the box. Um, we will get to some of that discussion tonight in very general terms, because it's the first time most of us are seeing it yesterday afternoon. Um, so we, as a school committee, will need some time to digest it as well, and we are planning for an additional meeting, a special uh, budget meeting with very 
uh, strict guidelines to really uh, recertify our budget to whatever dollar amount that may be at that time and to um, make some, some recommendations on where these cuts. As a school committee, it is our job to approve the budget, to review and approve uh, the budget in the district. And so we take that seriously um, and we will do the best to um, <coughs> keep everyone's needs and everybody's requests. We've received many um, in our thoughts as we venture through this process. But first I'd like to talk about the meeting on May 30th. What time would you all like to meet? What do you think? It's a Wednesday night. <laughs> They're like, wait, hold on. Wait. It will be a, a meeting. Um, yeah, early. Early, early. Is, early is great for me. Mm -hmm. it's early. Five. Like five o'clock? Five. It's, it's, it's early. It's early as five. Five. I usually get off at five. Five thirty? Five thirty would probably work best. Five thirty, Sarah? I can do five or five thirty. Karen? I have to. I have a previous commitment that okay. I can't get out. It's at 7, but if it was at 5.30, I could come for an hour. Okay. I'm flexing. 5.30? 5.30. 5.30. Is that good? 5.30? Where? Um, here. And on camera? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Uh, and for the purpose of recertifying our budget and making, uh, approving final dollars to the budget review so we may not be able to at that time but at least make it sense. based on that part of the of what the agenda is going to be I would like to make a motion that when we do recertify we are recertifying by um, cost, center. cost centers so that is going to take some preparation for our motions because it's not just one number. Correct. I would be happy to work on those if needed. Not the number. The, <laughs> <laughs> the like, wording yeah. of the motions, you mean? <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. I do believe the person that typically does that will not be available to make those for us on Wednesday. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. All right, so uh, everybody's, well, Aaron made a motion. Does somebody want a second? Seconded by Tammy. All those in favor of approving a budget by cost center, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Any abstentions? I guess. <clears throat> um, all right, so you received in front of you, um, you've received a lot. So you've received some proposed um, cuts by um, school by line item, by lots of different ways. So I'm going to turn it over to Alan and Wen to, I guess, start walking us through this. I don't know. Sure. Whatever you parts of it you would like to. Sure. I'd like to take everyone through um, how we got to this point. And we've, we've had a lot of meetings and I've spent a lot of time on it. The, the biggest concern is that it's 7.5% of our budget, of a budget that's already barely giving us what we need to operate. Wen Cobb is our business manager, and the amount of work that she has put in and, and with the input from folks has been staggering. We listened to the joint meeting that we had on May 9th. So I was asked for a three-year plan, strategic and financial plan. In that plan, I recommended a 3.1% increase in the FY19 budget. <coughs> it would have been just about a $700,000 increase. And that would have been roughly $200,000 additional dollars from Millville, roughly $500,000 of additional monies from Blackstone. That, if we had been able to reach that number, we still would be cutting almost a million dollars. These numbers are staggering. 
one million if we could have received additional supplemental dollars in those two amounts, 200 from Millville and 500 from Blackstone. Given the towns, both towns, current financial situations, on May 9th, it was readily apparent that we were not going to be there. So then we were looking at how do we squeeze $1.6 million of cost and reductions given all of the concerns from everybody. There's concerns <clears throat> from parents about making sure that their children have what they can take to graduate. There are concerns from employees <coughs> that they have jobs. There's concern from the leadership team who has invested careers and passion and energy to provide the best education. And there's concerns from the school committee who are elected to make sure that we deliver on meeting all of the laws as well as the goals and the policies that they set forth for our district. The numbers are an impossibility. You can't cut 7.5% from a number that's already barely allowing us to make ends meet. So the approach that we took, we listened to the recommendations from the school committee. And obviously, those consisted of making sure that we preserved as many programs as we possibly could, making sure that music and athletics remained a viable piece of the district, trying to keep our high school as intact as possible because we continue to lose so many students to other educational options after grade eight. I can relate one story that tells me everything. I asked a parent how his oldest was doing, who was at the high school, having a great year, but my youngest is not going to come to BMR. I said, why? We offer tremendous opportunity for all students. You guys don't have the money. Well, it's up to the voters to vote to make sure we have the money. It's up to the school committee to allocate and then up to the voters to, to, to exercise their will. And that is where we are today. We have tried to be as, I called the Department of Education to see if we could close a school because you can save some serious money closing a school. But the regional agreement and the fact that we are paying bonds at, on every school doesn't allow for that. So we have five schools with plenty of space that we must continue to run as schools. We looked at every possible way to cut, save, or postpone but as many of you know, that approach has not worked so well when you look at the condition of our schools. And as I told both town boards, every 50 years or so, you gotta put some money into these schools. And so we've got to continue to pressure the state to fund our schools properly. And that has become my life's work. And that may be what I do on July 1st when I leave. Because they are ab the state has abdicated their responsibility to regional school districts. And Sarah Williams has done incredible work in analyzing how much 
that has cost us over the last several years. So we are looking at trying to take all of the recommendations from the committee. We're taking the recommendations that we heard loud and clear at the joint meeting of all town boards. And we're finding that there is nothing that we can cut that's going to get us to $1.6 million. So we have to take the path of least impact and hope that it's only for one year. And so we are going to have to cut all non-essential items, whether they are supplies for our buildings, whether it is instructional materials, whether it is textbooks, whether it is uh, technology. We have to look at everything. Now, one piece of this budget that we are under the gun by the state's direction is that we have to computer base test all grade levels, all subjects next year. And that's going to require an additional person just to manage all of the devices. So that is in that position is still in this budget. We know that we are going to have to increase class sizes. When I asked the superintendents in surrounding towns in the Blackstone Valley, we had the lowest class sizes. Most elementary schools run 24 to 28. Most middle schools run 28 to 32. That's the fact. And so we are going to have to recommend to the committee to increase class sizes. We already took $340,000 worth of positions and salaries out of the budget last year. <coughs> we reduced our custodial staff by 18%. We reduced an adjustment counselor at the high school. We took out the assistant superintendent for curriculum. We took out all of our lunch monitors. So we've already taken one hit, and so we gave back a little of our gains over the previous three years. The math doesn't change no matter how big <clears throat> the numbers are. Four minus two is two. 400,000 minus 200,000 is 200,000. It doesn't matter. And so we are now at a point as, as Jane and Erin mentioned, that we are dependent on what will happen Tuesday night at the Blackstone Annual Town Meeting, and then that will dictate to the committee how they want to move forward. But regardless of that outcome, we are still going to be in a very, very difficult space because we're going to have to reduce staff, we're going to have to reduce programming, and we're going to have to um, look at other options in order to gain additional revenue. Yes, we're going to have to look at asking companies to purchase signs to hang around the track for football games. Yes, we're going to have to look at asking well-off car dealers to donate or reduce price a car to us so that we can sell lottery tickets a chance on that vehicle. We have a problem in that we, as a district, don't get treated fairly at the state level or the federal level, and I know people are sick and tired of me saying that. But it puts an unfair and undue burden on taxpayers and property tax as the, as the major funding source to run a school district. In the 90s, the federal government chipped in 15% of most school districts' funding. 
the state chipped in 50 to 60 percent. Local town budgets only had to come up with the rest, 25 to 35 percent. That has all changed as the, the federal funding, two years ago it was down below 2 percent, <clears throat> what we took in in federal grants to offset our expenditures. And the state and the federal, the state and the local shares was the same. There were 48 percent each. 49% each. <clears throat> so the state has paid a lot less. The local share has gone up dramatically. And since 2007, even further, because of how the state figures the amount of money that each town must contribute to their school budget. It's income and property values. And so that, again, took away less state funding and put more more dollars on the backs of the towns to to contribute to operating their school districts Stop me if I'm so boring I'm go ahead yeah. so that's that's where we are so what members of the school committee have in front of them and in front of us um, are proposed reductions um, that came from the leadership team and the administrative staff um, in special ed, and then uh, by school. MES, JFK, AFM, the middle school, the high school, and then district-wide. Um, and I know that people are looking at this for the first time, or the second time, if you... Yeah. Um, but does anybody have any... Any comments they would like to make? Any insight? Any suggestions? Um, Aaron. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, when, and I know you just redid this. Do you know what page the Chromebooks are on? On, on, on this? Which page? Or where, what, what part? Are they under middle school or technology? When you have to look it up. I can have this thing memorized. I know. <laughs> I 200 pages of data. Come on. Um, Page 68. I was just going to say, I bet you could find it rather quickly. Yeah, quicker than me. That was that I just went through. <laughs> Page 68. So, Chromebooks at um, middle school from grade 6 to 8, and um, uh, two cards at Millville, and two cards at the complex. 68. And that, Go and that dovetails with the initiative that, that the school committee um, endorsed two years ago to make sure that we increase the use of our technology. So at the high school level now, all of our students have Chromebooks. Okay. So Jane just said, does anyone have any suggestions? Yep. And I just, I want to make a proposal on our Chromebook um, initiative. Um, so if I'm reading this correctly, it's twenty-eight thousand dollars for six to eight to be a one-to-one. -to, -one. to lease. To yeah. lease, yes. Yeah. But that's how the expense we're for next year. Correct. So what would the what it, what is the three-year lease? What is the three-year lease purchase uh, yearly price? And what happens after three years? Because they're going to our high school and we're still a one-to-one -one high school. So is it $28,000 a year or is it cheaper each year? So last year we leased uh, our the high uh, two grades at the high school yep. and the, the other grades we have that w our own Chromebooks. We purchased those for right. the first year. But this is going to be a three-year a, a three year expense at $28,000 per year. Right. Um, but our one-to-one -one initiative is for every student to have a Chromebook in their hands. We are very successful at the high school with Google Classroom. Um, I have two kids there that are doing the majority of their work on their Chromebook. So I absolutely support this, but I would like, I would like to see this done differently. Um, if we're going to start this as a sixth grade initiative, and these kids are going to use them through high school, I think we need to ask parents to purchase them and take it out of our budget. 
hear me out on this. They're, they're about $200 each. I, maybe we get them a little bit less through the school. About 200 including For insurance. For a purchase. Insurance. They are going to have them from sixth grade to their senior year of high school. I still think they should be purchased through us and we would have our Go Guardian on there. Mm -hmm. The school would still have all of their, but that is less than parents pay for a one season sport user fee. This is something these kids are going to have through, uh, through middle school and high school and they're going to use it every day. I can attest to that. My two kids use it every day. I, I, I'm sorry, all four of my kids have them. It, it is, they need that technology in front of them, but I don't see why we cannot ask our parents, because we already ask so much of them, to make this purchase and we can put this $28,000 for the next three years back into our budget. These three grades here, and then, and then we can phase out of our lease in the high school. As these kids move up, we won't have that burden on us. For, for those leases that we've already entered into. So it, it, it would be a welcome to middle school. Here, you know, here's your issued Chromebook, but we could have payment plans. We can, we offer payment plans for user fees. The user fees are $200 for three months of a sport. So I don't think we're going to have parents say, I'm not paying for that. I think they're going to see their kids using these. They're going to buy them a piece of an electronic device anyway. They can buy the school issued one. And we can happily put that $28,000 every year back into our budget. And with this list in front of us, that makes a huge difference. Do I, I, I absolutely support the carts at the, at the elementary schools? Because then when they get here, they know, already know how to use it. They're going to know exactly, they're going to be able to come into sixth grade and already be in a Google Doc and be in a Google Classroom. Um, but a $28,000 line item on this day is a pretty big number for us. I don't, I'm not saying I don't support the technology initiative. I just want to see it funded differently. That's my suggestion. Comment on that? I yeah. I, I don't I can't speak to whether or not we can purchase and they can purchase or we, they can purchase through us and we can have go guardian on something they purchase I don't know I do believe what the rules are. many other schools have already done that that way but that is something we need Sean to yeah answer. But, um, and I would we have a fund or or for people who can't afford to pay? Well, I mean, we have the cards, right. So we're thinking, Erin's saying $28,000, but our, you know, when we talk about athletics and band and we talk about that free and free reduced lunch mm -hmm. um, allotment, and it, that number would be certainly less than that. I don't know how many district-wide free reduced lunch, but. There's, there's a difference between choosing to participate in a sport and taking part in a school directed initiative oh i agree i'm it, saying that uh, no, the number's I'm, not going to be twenty eight thousand. i'm saying on you <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> sorry oh, okay. i was gonna say i'm not saying they shouldn't get a chromebook yeah. because they can't pay for it i'm saying <clears throat> that number is not going to be twenty eight thousand. like i would rather see the initiative removed than keep it in there and say and you by the way you have to buy a 200 hundred dollar chromebook to attend our school I don't. I don't think it's that hard to do. I think it's. Um, I, I'm. I wish Sean was here tonight because I bet he already has information on it. Well, I'm going to be willing to bet that he already. It was the first year, and we had to pay. Well, I think the insurance. The insurance. For yeah. Three years. Yeah. And that was close yeah, to like two hundred dollars for the three years. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. One year is seventy. Um, was the first year the year we bought them? Yes. Yeah. So where are those going when? Why can't the, the, what the, the Chromebooks the seniors have, why can't that become the elementary cart Chromebooks? Because they're going to use them a lot less. We already own them. I Where are they going, going? They're going to the freshmen coming in. Yeah, I think so. Oh, they're going to just yeah, wrap to the freshmen. Freshman. Okay. Yeah, it's all a plan that everything... But we already have carts here. We, we're elementary. adding carts to elementary school. Nobody's going to go out without a Chromebook for the people that didn't make the purchase on time or... 
I mean, like I said, payment plans. It's a very inexpensive electronic that they're going to use daily. No, I, I don't just, I don't, I don't dispute that as all, at all. I just am concerned. It's an initiative for a district and essentially a requirement for a new district. And to say there's a cart, you can use it while you're in school. If it's not something I can check out and bring home, then I am at a disadvantage to a student who, whose parents can afford to, to purchase it. So I'm not saying we shouldn't do that. I'm just saying if we do that, there needs to be a, a, a plan for Next I think year, it's something we really need to consider. Can we ta yeah. can we test using the the um, carts that we have next year? We did. We they they used them this year. Yeah. So seventh why? grade just used them for all of their MCA, their MCAS. And how did that work? Because I'm just Ms. saying, like Ms. in Ms. the where we are right now, 1.6 million that we're cutting out. Can we just put that on hold? It, you know, we're looking at letting. You know, we're looking at increasing tax. Um, class sizes we're looking at you know letting faculty members go can we not hire a new tech person and just put the chromebook initiative on hold for one year if we had success this year with mcas with the kids taking them using the carts that we already have and take that burden off of our plate i i will ask everybody's permission to have tanya speak but before you do that i do want to say the the Chromebooks and purchasing them and the new tech person, we're behind keeping up with our technology now. So the new tech person is really a different issue okay. whether we have the Chromebooks or don't. So let's stay on the Chromebook for right now and thank you. So I know that um, Sean has you know, pushed it as more of an MCAS initiative. We have one Chromebook in the whole school. So in order to take the MCAS, we pulled from other schools and he brought them here. We have some that were from the high school. We had some from all over in order to pull off this year's testing, which sixth grade was on paper. Besides that though, the Chromebooks themselves, so I know you asked about Go Guardian. The Go Guardian is on a student's account. So when they log into the Chromebook, it's on there. It's not, yeah. nothing is housed on a Chromebook. A Chromebook is not like a laptop. Mm -hmm. You cannot do many, many things on a Chromebook that you do on a laptop. The, what we have in computer labs here, the monitors, we, we barely got enough purchase when found some money. Mike dismantled the lab that he had at the high school in order to replace monitors we had here because they're 15 years old the, and they're not, so there's three labs in the middle of the school. Those are not really true labs because they, are, they do not have their own CUP, CPU, so their own little tower. Only the tech lab has the towers. All of those are ran, run off of the server. So they're not, it's really just one mm -hmm. uh, monitor mm -hmm. that then logs into the server mm -hmm. and they use it off of the server. The computer labs are used on a daily basis. However, the students and the teachers cannot fully implement the way like they are at the high school. So yes, we need them to take the testing. However, we are way beyond. I walk around here and I'm seeing things from when I first started teaching. Students are doing projects using pizza, pizza things to come up with projects. There, there's so many non-tech projects that they could be doing with tech simply because a teacher can't always be dependent on a computer lab being open. So it's it's a little more than just the testing, and I know that that's what Sean has kept mm -hmm. reiterating, but I do want you to know it's a lot more than just that. It, it's going to change the whole school, and my fear is that the eighth graders, when they get to the ninth grade, and now that all of the high school is so used to Google Classroom and everything, that they're, they're not going to be compared understand what to do with that Chromebook. They'll know some of it, but they're not going to know to the extent that it's happening at the high school. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for the clarification. You're welcome. I would just like it to be something that we consider yep. because, again, making that purchase in sixth grade for something they're going to use through high school um, it, it's if you divide it by the years they're going to use yeah. it it's, well, I, it's, I, I will tell you something they purchase in sixth grade won't be working when they're yeah 
12 years later. Not a grown book. Which is part of the reason we went to leasing instead of purchasing, because leasing was cheaper, but it also renewed our Chromebooks mm -hmm. more often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we can get Somebody insight from that. Sean and yeah. Yeah. Still. Like five certainly. Yeah. certainly. So Sean will be here Wednesday. Could you ask him to um, bring us examples of other schools that purchase? Mm -hmm. Um, I believe Coventry, Rhode Island is one. There are schools that also do the be, bring your own device, you mm -hmm. know, and I know yeah. that comes with its a whole other issues, uh, but uh, so I feel like so many kids already have iPads at home. But or, when they're logged in, like as she just said, my kids have their own Chromebook, but when they are logged in, and they have to be to be in Google Classroom, they have to be logged into their BMRSD, they are under GoGuardian. Okay. I've seen the screen block them. Yeah. So if they're logged in, even on the Chromebooks that they're issued, they're, they're running under, right. under that. Thank you. So I have a question on the first page, SPED reductions. First page, that yep. yep, go ahead. I'm gonna just ask just go. you to confirm. Yep. No, nothing specific, um, but just there's no legal impacts on cutting some of this. I feel like we already have a lot of um, hear stuff that <laughs> people aren't getting all their services and whatnot all the time. Is this going to impact impact any of that? That's all been. Yeah. The short answer is, every district in special ed has has those issues. We did have um, a hiccup in delivery of certain services this year due to resignations mid year. Things here may take some time to work themselves out, but there's no, and, and special ed is so fluid during the year as people come in and leave, move in, move out, mm -hmm. that you will probably have to react to that once you're in the year, but to get, to turn the page on the checkbook, these were done with vetting it as we know it today, okay. as we know the information today. With next year in mind, yeah. yes. The, whoever is coming with in, what whoever is leaving. Know as of okay. yes, yes. IEPs as we know them. IEPs as we know them. I know them well. Um, may I bring up a, a something may? I don't see here that, and if I if it's here, um, we as as members of the school committee, I don't even know what meeting that was. We in passing talked about maybe perhaps taking a reduction in our stipends. Um, and I just wanted to revisit that if that was something we were willing to do. Again, it's not a huge number of a reduction, um, but every little bit, I feel like every little bit counts. And um, I thought if we could discuss that, that would be great. I don't know if we do that here. It's we can, yeah, we absolutely do. Because if okay. we're going to tell them we want to do that, we need to have okay. some. So I just would be willing to do what we have to do personally. I can, I will speak for myself when I ran to become a member of the school committee. I didn't even know there was a stipend. Yeah. I didn't expect it. I wasn't, and it was a very nice surprise. However, having now been here for four years, um, I will tell you that I have spent some of it much of it giving back to the school. Um, so I don't, I, I think um, it's a gesture. I think it's an important one. If we're asking people to sacrifice, I think it's an important one. But I also know that for some people, it, it may mean significant amount, especially the time of year that, that it comes. Mm -hmm. In, 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 the, in my thought process of perhaps just a reduction, because okay. um, I do think we get one in November, mm -hmm. so maybe we keep that one in anticipation of Christmas gifts, but then maybe my Disney trip's not as important <laughs> in <laughs> July. Don't tell <laughs> No, I'm just saying, if we reduce, yeah, no. I right. think the compromise mm -hmm. is maybe do the right before Christmas stipend and maybe not the others, if anybody's willing to do that. 
I'm definitely willing to do that as long as we know. I, I think we're going to need that to place certain things on this list back that we feel passionate about. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to. I don't. I to do that. I think. Are we saying where it's going though? Yes. I think we should yeah. save that for Wednesday when okay, we can. Okay, we can do that. Okay. Or maybe at the end of when we get through this list. We can do that. Okay. All right. Any other ideas, suggestions, thoughts, concerns, crises? On, on this, back to this, or just this, this one this, item? This or I any of the questions items. on this. I just on the school. Can we talk about what our um, class sizes are going to look like? <clears throat> Uh, yeah. Uh, so if we start with um, Millville Elementary School, we are anticipating two, if I'm reading this right, so please correct me if I'm wrong, two kindergarten classes with approximate class size of 17 in each, um, a grade one classroom with 25 students, and a combined grade one, two classroom with 24 students. Can you tell us, what? can someone tell us what that looks like? And a let me just a grade two class a grade two classroom of twenty six students, a grade three of twenty seven, and a combined grade three four of twenty seven, a grade four of twenty seven, and a grade five of twenty seven. So. So what does a one what two, does a one, two and, and a three four, three, four look, like? look like? That's a good question. Who's got it? <laughs> Is it half and half? Or? Would you like to answer? Can you answer? It's up to you. I just want to know what the staffing in the room would be like. Not necessarily where the students One teacher, from. right? Just one. Yeah. one, the one teacher. Teacher. I think you're going to have parents that want to understand what a yeah. what a one, two, and a three, four look mm -hmm. like. You're, uh, thank you very much. Sorry. Thank you, Dr. Hall. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you so much. Uh, so essentially, in order to get to the exercise that was requested, uh, trying to get fair and equitable class sizes uh, on both sides of the district. The only way to do that is to create a triad model. That's a one, one, two, two um, exercise. You'd be reducing FTE counts. Um, in other words, instead of four teachers or two teachers to grade one and two teachers to grade two, you'd go to three and you just redeploy the students. Um, and, you know, your first grade is going to be mixed with second grade. And, uh, so they're going to be sitting in the same classroom. Yeah. One teacher in the front. Separate sides of the room. That's the model. And you do it again in grades three, four. Uh, and five is independent of itself because five is five. Um, with kindergarten, I tried to look at it a couple different ways. So um, the numbers you're looking at really are trying to take kindergarten independent. And we, we matched up pretty well with what JFK had done at that level. But in order to get the exercise to match up and be fair and equitable across the district with Millville and Blackstone, it was the only model I could find. Um, and it was really through a receivership that I could identify the model uh, where, it had, where it had taken place before. And um, that's how I got to the numbers I got to. This is not ideal and it's nothing we want to do. But um, again, a lot of the things we're talking about tonight aren't things nothing we want to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, to be clear, uh, I expect a lot of complaints. I expect people to be upset. And uh, that's not why I did it. I did it because in order to be fair and balanced on all sides of the district and what was requested in the exercise, this is the only way to kind of make those numbers in enrollments match in, when it came to class size. There's no other way to do it. The regional agreement doesn't allow it for Millville Elementary, I'm sorry. Uh, unless you're willing to suspend the regional agreement and have conversation immediately around amending the agreement, there's no other way to make that work. Um, and and it, it's, it, there's no way. This is the only other option. What is your K enrollment to this date? Uh, right now we're sitting at 26. Uh, Mrs. O'Neill uh, and I have seen over the summer comings and goings, but we've never not hit uh, in the 30s. Uh, so we're, we're projecting the number we're giving you based on what's happened over the last few summers. And I can only give you my summers that I was there with her. I asked her, you know, and we've talked about it on numerous occasions, uh, but a handful to seven kids is a reasonable expectation, give or take. 
Um, we just had one come in and we had another one go out and then another one come in. So <laughs> it's, it's a moving target. And how many hours are the K-Aids in the classroom? Uh, 4.5, I apologize, 4.5, 10 to 2.30. They get a, a lunch and a break. And that this model still has them in the... I did not take them out. Okay. Yes, so both. Both schools? Yes. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, just to, again, fair, to keep everything fair and balanced. That was what we were asked to do. So can you just give us an idea of what a day would look like in the first and second grade classroom? Uh, so second grade would run like a regular schedule, the specials and the enrollments, the expectation in uh, looking at the schedule in terms of how it would roll out in a quick mock-up. It would hopefully open up opportunities for us to have a little more reading and possibly PE the way we had hoped. What about the curriculum that's being delivered? Well, if it's shared instruction? Yeah. yeah um, they're not teaching just to third and just to fourth, because like, yeah. they're in the shared. same classroom. So it's shared instruction it's shared Correct. with it's the shared, shared standards. In the classroom, that would be 3-4. That would be expected, yeah. <clears throat> and would they be, you just mentioned specials, would they be attending specials as a first grade or a second grade? Yeah, they'd be going as first and second. They'd go that together. That class would go as its own like this, class. Like the, the second graders in the class wouldn't go separately with the other second grade class? Oh. They would run as their own class with that teacher getting their prep. Because that's the expectation is they have to, again, that teacher for grade one, two in that exercise, the teacher for one would have their prep, grade one, two would have their prep, and grade two would have their prep and that triad. So instead of an, uh, uh, again, grade one would have two FTE. Grade two right now has two FTE. You're going to three. You're taking the same number of enrollment that you have and you're dividing it by three and that's how you come, come up with your enrollment to match up with what we do at JFK and AFM. So with the list in front of us, it has nine classrooms. Ah, uh, yes. How many are there right now? I will add two more. That's, 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 just, that's two. Yeah, we have two additional FTEs that would be in there uh, for this year, so it'd be eleven. Right? But our fourth grade, maybe. Yeah, the fourth grade would be our five. So the number you're looking at there for yeah. next year is the yeah. same. It, there's no reduction there because that four moved up to become our five next year. Tammy, um, so obviously this is not ideal. We we there's no. nobody here that doesn't appreciate what you tried to do, Paul. Yep. Um, has this model, you said you look, when you researched this, it was part of a receivership situation. It did has it, been used. Did it play out through the years where, so my concern would you be. You can see the blip in terms Johnny, of the research. If Johnny's data. always in the double class, yeah. if Johnny's on the high end of things, have, have, do, is there any research to show the impact? I, you can I, see I don't that see year this on the track of the data totally awful as a teacher in that you can differentiate and you're you're going to differentiate instruction anyway so you there are first grade there are second graders who are on the closer to the first grade level and there are second graders who are probably closer to the third grade level so i i know that there's a gap there but in this model would the intent be that you the kid yeah. student a is is going to be in a S single grade class the following year? I can't or, speak to what the following year would look okay. like. So um, I, don't know I was asked if, to do this that, exercise that right ever, here, right now. No, However, I just in, didn't know if what you in the research I the found, show. In the research I found, you can see where those kids are in that year and how they track. Okay. And the data bears out. Do, can you tell me what district, do you recall what district you looked at? It was in Rhode Island. Okay. Thank you. But again, I, I, I caution, this is the exercise we were asked to do. I appreciate uh, that. And so in no way am I advocating this is the ideal, nor is it what we want on either side of the district, Blackstone or Millville. Um, we've been together now a number of times as a leadership team, as a school committee, um, and discussed you know, the need for us to advocate and work together. We've, we're doing the best we can with the scenarios and situations we've been given. Um, and I can tell you bottom 
father of my heart, I'm up, I'm up way too much at night over this stuff, uh, trying to think of different ways to look at it. And I've researched this probably from a research base is the only real scenario that would make it equitable and fair and balanced between the two sides of the district and the current regional agreement that exists. Um, if I would advocate one thing to the committee going forward, it's to open up the regional agreement and amend it immediately. Yeah. And I, that's not something that's easy to do. And, and this, prior to me being here, we tried that and yeah. it did not I, work. Yeah, but and, we tried it differently. And, yeah. and, I, no, but, and we looked I just, at it last meeting too. I would just say, given it. our current uh, yeah, situation I, going forward, that would be the reason to do this right. and get as many people involved as possible. Okay. I would echo that. We tried it two years ago. Millville did not approve it. But the reason why we're here looking at alternative formats is because of Millville. So that regional agreement can be suspended to allow for grade level buildings and an orderly representation by cohort. And that's what needs to happen, as Paul said. In, in, that, in that exercise that he's, he's spelling out, meaning uh, our superintendent, that really requires the action and, and really the activity of the committee. And, and that's beyond our pay grade, for lack of a better way of putting it. The leadership team doesn't have that purview. We, we don't. We, we've studied and looked at it different ways, but that really is something for you to have to look at and investigate and consider. And I, I encourage you to do so. I just, given what I know and what our current constructs are, this was probably the only and really the best scenario that I, could be created at this time, at this time. Hopefully things change and we find a better uh, solution down the road. But uh, to Jack's point and others, uh, Mr. Keefe's point and others, I apologize. Uh, I would tell you, you know, we're hypersensitive to what everyone's going through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the priority for us is the education of the children, the needs of the kids in front of us. And, you know, that's why we've struggled the way we have in trying to find as many options and opportunities to resolve and provide quality education at the elementary level for Millville and for Blackstone. So I just, I hope that answers your questions. I know that I'm sure you have a, a lot more, but it's really creating a triad for certain grade levels where the enrollment is bigger and reducing an FTE out of that count. It's the only way I could do it in order to make it work. Yes, ma'am. I just have a question. Yeah. To suspend the regional agreement, though, it needs to go through a town meeting. Yeah, so I just wanted to clarify so that it, it needs to be, we can't. It has to be brought by the there's, school yes, to right. town. There's no clause that we can right. somehow no. so emergency I'm, crisis do when it. When we met as a, a right. regional group, when we met with both boards of selectmen and the, the yes. leadership okay. team, Thank you. who could be present, and ourselves and finance committee members, I threw out the idea of um, taking the Millville third, fourth, and fifth graders and moving them to the Blackstone as a cohort group. So that all we were talking about was when kids get on the bus in Millville, the young ones get dropped off. So that becomes a K one and two yeah. and the three, four, five go to Blackstone. And then they're one big cohort group and they're divided equally in the class size in that group. And both members of the boards, all the members of both towns, boards of selectmen and finance committee kind of what, laughed at me and said, not this go round. Mm -hmm. So I did some more research and if we do that, we can propose a motion um, to suspend or to redo or to whatever the um, regional agreement, but we would have to then request of both towns to hold a special town meeting and, and vote on it. It would be the decision of the towns. It would not ultimately be our decision. So I guess to that point, it could you, I mean, I know that, I know the enormity of this conversation, but could that be done in the time frame of this budget, <clears throat> technically speaking, with everybody's meeting notices yes, and think can. about it before you. So it could be, we could make that motion whenever we choose to make that motion and we then certify and our secretary sends off to both towns and the towns have X number of days to um, call a special town meeting. 
Can you word that again? Explain what we ex explain that proposal. Okay, so so if the school committee proposes, I don't know the term suspend the regional agreement, to, but to change the regional agreement, we'd have to very clearly say which um, passages in the regional agreement we were looking to suspend slash change. Amend. Amend. Thank you. Uh, it, it's it is yeah. it's an amendment. You're, yeah. you're looking to amend in. The other districts are doing the same process right now, so that's the only reason I. Thank you. Um, but at any of the pieces, and there are several pieces in there, and we'd have to clearly say what our plan is, um, and then we would make that motion as a school committee. If it's approved here in the school committee, it is then um, certified and sent to both towns, the towns at their next board of selectmen meeting so it's not like they don't have 15 days from the day they get it in their hands okay, they have 15 so days from the time or 14 days or whatever it is from the time to make a decision and call a special town meeting they have so many days to do that special town meeting so you know we're getting close and if july 1 is the impact but truly the start of school is the mm -hmm. is the impact and then both towns would vote and as we saw in the case last time, if one town that's not, there's no special town meet, it's not a financial thing. So there's no special town meeting afterwards. Both towns would have to agree. If both towns don't agree. By half, two thirds majority, what's the, what's the agreement? Do we know? I don't know. I didn't, okay. That's the question I didn't ask. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I don't remember what it was last time. I don't. Anybody in the audience remember? I believe it's majority. We're we're already we're already possibly looking at asking Millville for a special town meeting for the budget. It would be something that could be included in that. And Blackstone has one, June twenty seventh. So your idea, Jane, was to do three, four, and five go to the complex from Millville. What about we don't even know what two? that would look like. I know that, but just okay. we we move in the first and second all to no. I wasn't moving any people Millville. out of. So when we did the, the, and I don't really don't I have a huge agenda tonight. So let me try to make it short. But when we did the regional agreement last time, and then when we had another committee try to study it again, we really got stuck with the buses mm -hmm. and buses going back and forth and be, and and students being on those buses. I mean, it was just you know if you're if you're you're kind of coming and going and back forth and forward backwards and buses going on roads that two cars can't even pass on and it just kind of fell to the wayside and so in my thought process and I'm I am explained to everyone here and on camera this was just my thought process this is not discussed by the school committee it has never been other than thrown out at the meeting trying to again think outside the box was that if we in fact could just move just try to have equitable class size, equitable teaching, a chance for teachers to collaborate together um, from the district for kids that are truly impacted, the kids that take those MCAS tests, the kids that move to a middle school together. If they could be together, which was our original goal in, in trying to move everybody, um, I believe that there was tremendous learning um, value in that. And so my thought process was to take to the Millville buses, would pick up the Millville students like they always do, drive to Millville, drop off one kindergarten, one and two, and then as those buses were driving back to Telstone, because that's what they do, they leave Mel Millville and they go back to Telstone, they make a little whoop, whoop, and pull in the driveway. And that's an official. Make, make, make a left, can... make a right, pull into the with, driveway. With the sound? Yes. I just want to be clear. If the sound's included, I might be left, interested. right, into the driveway, drop off the third. Now, somebody's going to tell me three, four, and five get dropped off on the other side of the school, but I'm just hoping. They get dropped off, and then the buses go right to Telstone. So you're not talking about buses switching each other. You're not talking about, but then you're talking about grades three, grades four, and grades five that could be Equally, equitably dispersed amongst themselves. I do believe that there is space in AFM, um, you know, enough classroom size to have the additional teachers. You would probably still save FTE because now you're dividing both numbers together. 
You would have equal sizes. You would have ability for teachers to have to collaborate on curriculum because they're in the same building. You would have probably some ability to use those reading specialists a little bit better because you might be able to combine them for those grades. And then Millville becomes a K to two, like an early elementary, whatever, just for the Millville, just on the for and maybe you can hopefully rent the second floor to FICO or somebody else. So it was thrown out there. It was it was a it was a how do we how do we come up with 1.6 million dollars and have teaching that's of value to the students in the district. So again, when it was thrown out in our May meeting, it was like this lady took something before she came to the meeting. <laughs> but as we're looking at these numbers, I'll throw it back out there. Well, and to, to that point, just so everybody understands, that's the, that's the lack of a better way of saying it. That's That's been the elephant in the room the whole time. The 1.6 is a number that, you know, I've closed, we collectively as, as a leadership team, we've closed 340, 325. This is a very large number to try and close. Um, you know, you're, you're talking about loss of service no matter what you do, programs and services, no matter what you do when you get at this number. That's a fact. Um, and people are impacted as a result. So again, I, I, I did the best I could and I looked for as many scenarios and situations and this one was just the one that seemed to make the model work uh, to have it be fair and balanced on all sides of the district. For JFK, AFM, um, should the should the committee wish to um, exercise an amendment of, of any kind, um, you, you know, you just need your language clean and crisp, and the lawyer to vet it and then send it off. But I I, I can tell you this this is uh, stressful on all parties, you us, uh, the families, all of us. So um, I was hypersensitive when when given the homework, for lack of a better way of putting it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hogg. Thank you. Um, and, I, and I do want to reiterate, people have said it all night long, and we are not looking to punish one, one town over another town or um, give benefit to one town over another town. We are truly trying to have an equitable education system across the board, K through 12. And we're trying to make sure everybody gets served to the ability and have the programs and have the um, things necessary to, to maximize their potential within this district. So, does anybody have any comments on the MES win? So uh, it really depends on their enrollment. So when I look at the grade three uh, enrollment at both schools, 157 kids in total mm -hmm. and we do six classes that's 26 students a class if we reduce to five that's 31.2 and right now in this model we only have five and a half so she's saying it's not a savings it's, right. it's not in one grade but it may be in others <laughs> it may be yeah, is that the current so third grade other, or the incoming the third grade <laughs> The incoming third grade. So the current second grade. Really, I can't have thirty-one. So then the. Um, so then, teachers, so any other um, MES? There's no motion so the proposal for JFK looks at a kindergarten, five classes of twenty; grade one, three classes of twenty-eight; grade two, three classes of twenty-eight. Grade three, four classes of 29. Grade four, three classes of 30. And grade five, four classes of 27. Yeah. Um, kindergarten, five, five grades, uh, five grades, five classes, 20 each. Grade one, three, 28. Grade two, three, 28. Grade three, four, 29. Grade Four three thirty, and grade five four twenty seven. Three, three of thirty students each. Any. Questions, comments on anything in the, that part? The middle school, 
looks at um, reducing programs, empowering writers, and and virtual high virtual what's VHS? What's that? Virtual high school. Virtual, virtual, virtual high school. school. Yes, okay. um, it would also mean the loss of the seventh and eighth grade purple teams to create a seven slash eight purple team. The seventh grade history teacher would teach four sections of 24 students and one large 30 students section in the eighth grade. The eighth grade history teacher would teach three sections of 25 students and one section of seventh from the split team and one large 30 students of eighth grade. The science teacher from the seventh grade teaches a STEM two class with focus on technology standards and that position becomes part of a rotation to help cover, cover other classes um, with over 30 students, um, would still be able to have STEM in all grades, reading separate in sixth, and GEM slash intervention classes for all, and all bands at the current times. Questions, comments, concerns there? Can we? Go ahead, Erin. No, go ahead. I was gonna ask if she could come up and explain. Um, how purple purple works. How purple purple works. That was one of my questions. Why why only one side like this? Yeah. Is there a way? It's to... only necessary on one side. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't have a question. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'll oh, let so ask kind it. of purple purple and purple seven. So I assume purple is one side and another yellow is probably the other. Yes, oh, I guess okay. it's always been referred okay. referred to as A and B. I have no idea about A and B because okay. then they switch to purple, so I go by purple and gold. Okay. Either way, I'm still not sure which hallway is which. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is: is you'd have one you'd have one team of right, one, but it the would purple it, it would not be. be I can just re explain the whole thing. Okay. So yeah. grade six would be untouched in and not impacted because we have 150 coming in so that is actually larger than the current eighth grade that's leaving us the problem is is that there are only 126 present sixth graders so if you're at 80 28 a class that's a team of 112 students which right now i have teams of 60. so they're only a little over and the contract states 30. So the, I still would not have any team over 30 except one, two history classes of eighth grade meeting at that time. And even then, presently, there may be some special ed students that need a resource history going into eighth grade, which then I plan to place there to make that class size lower. So the sixth grade would have what they have intact. There would be one team in seven. There would be one team in eight. There would be a team that's a 7-8 team that would have a class of 7th grade because the 7th grade is so small. I'm not going to put two other classes. And then two classes of 8th grade as well as now two more GEM classes with more intervention. In order to not overflow the rotation classes, however, because that's really where I'm short-staffed, one science would be able to move and do like a STEM 2 class that could then focus on technology the technology standards that they don't get to get that I had asked about for a tech teacher to begin with. Um, in this way, the rotation classes wouldn't go over 30 because they already presently sometimes get close to 30 at 29, 30 already. So the science teacher would teach, science would be continued to be taught and then a science teacher would then sort of teach a middle school elective class in this STEM two, you're calling right, it Right, because they two. already, the science teachers presently already do a STEM class during rotation. That's where they're focusing on the engineering standards. Sure. So this one would be focusing on the tech. I have another question. Oh, sure. So VHS um, historically has been used as an enrichment for students who are on the higher level of academics. Cutting that line item. So right now, the person who's teaching VMS, it's it's cutting at the middle school, but not at the high school. So we have two teachers right now, and there's 50 seats at the high school, 50 seats at the elementary, uh, at the middle school. So I've talked with Mr. Dudek, and when they're not using seats, we could still have it. So in order to get the discounted price, you have to have a teacher. The teacher I have presently doing is a history teacher that I do not have a spot. So I would have to see if another teacher would volunteer because they don't get paid to take the lessons or the session. They have to learn how to do it. So he has a teacher at the high school that's set aside. You have to set aside a period for them to teach mm -hmm. 
a virtual school. They're not teaching our own students. Right. They're teaching the students They're just online. contributing to yeah. the big pool right. of VHS. In order to get it discounted. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK. So, so we would be able to have some seats if the high school's not using them. We could still use them here. And we can presently do it that way. And if I don't have anyone, any other teacher that wants to be the v VMS, we call it VMS, but it's really VHS, um, it doesn't allow for the present person that I have to schedule. OK. So my s next part of that question is, if a parent was willing, can they purchase a seat? So if middle school ends up with three seats, it's very expensive if you don't have a teacher. <laughs> but if you're you're going on Mike's number, right? We would the, still have for 50, his extra still have, seats are going to go to you. So still, you're going to get a, have fifty seats total between the middle and the high school. So you can't you can't purchase additional seats on that. You have to do a whole we, new plan. We could, but they would cost more money because it's only if we we only get that discounted price if on we have another teacher. teacher. Yeah, it's one pri it's one teacher of fifty seats. And and either Mike or you, do you know the additional price? If it's like if the fifty first seat, how much would it cost us? It was a few, it was quite a few thousand dollars more. Thousands of dollars for one seat? No, not for one seat. It was double the price, I believe. For all fifty. Um, for all an additional. Don't 50. quote me on it, but I believe so. We had a couple of years ago. We had a senior. We had a full fifty seats, and we had a senior that really wanted to take one, and I believe it was. We charged that family. It was three. I think it was two hundred and fifty dollars. But they were willing to to pay that to take that that course, and it was, I think, a second VHS course that they that they wanted to take. So the the quote agreement that Tanya and I <laughs> sort of talked about is because I mean VHS courses, um, I mean, are somewhat fluid. You never know who wants to take a VHS class. It's a different ball game. Some mm -hmm. students do that do really well in the classroom, don't do very well online. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we warn them about that, but that's something that, you know, some years we have uh, a, um, we have a waiting list of kids and there's other years that we're, we're trying to recruit students to go and take VHS. Um, so with that in mind, I told Tanya that if we do have seats available, I'd be more than willing willing to rather than recruit kids from study halls that may not be completely invested in the VHS program to bring down to the middle school. Um, however, there could be a domino effect that if we lose certain teachers at the high school and there's no electives, their choice of an elective may be a VHS course. So, you know, we looked at do we cut VHS altogether? And I thought, well, if the domino effect is we're losing a physical teacher and we're losing six to eight electives, I need six to eight electives for students to be able to take unless we look at our graduation requirements of six electives and say they're taking three. And looking at various options of, I don't know, doing outside internships and giving credit that way. So I don't know where that all will fall depending on what our budget looks like and where kids are choosing courses but I believe it was to answer the question I believe three years ago somebody was really adamant about taking another course and I think it was $250 um, that, <clears throat> that they explored and will the time frame Mike so obviously this budget process is going to go through if if there are seats left when do you think Tanya would know that to offer it would it be like it would have to be the second semester or because you guys need to work out your scheduling first so you get 25 seats each semester mm -hmm. so if you know if first semester he only needed 10 he could but tell me when, I guess my question is to Mike at what point would he know that he only needs 10 to let you know because then the kid here's schedule has to change um, right I I'm at the the liberty of a budget Sure. Because oh, sure, I, sure. I, 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 <laughs> no, I honestly, we I, haven't yeah. started scheduling yet. Yeah. Yes. I mean, no, I, I, and I creating a master that. schedule. I mean, yeah. it's a little, it's a little different um, at the high school. I mean, I'm looking at sections and I'm looking at individualized classes. I'm looking at singletons. I'm looking at what teachers are qualified to teach, multiple levels, honors, AP, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, honestly, I don't create a budget or a master schedule, I have an idea, but I don't create it until I truly know because it, it really takes me two weeks of me yeah. and others sitting in a room, not being interrupted, looking at a master schedule and saying, 
okay, here's an individual that has these certain courses. Realistically, can they get those courses? Because you all know that every single student and majority of parents want their son or daughter to have all seven classes that they all scheduled for. Right. And it's not reality, but I try to do my best to go and make sure that students get majority of their classes. But that, that matrix of a schedule honestly is my biggest anxiety every year. Sure, thank you. Yes. Um, just while we have both of them there. Oh, oh, okay. The high school 50 seats are, is on this list. Yeah. So right. to me, I, I was looking at this and I thought it was being proposed that it was cut 100%. Oh, it's on the list of yeah. I have both I middle have 50 school and the high ahead. school. But they have so, 50 seats. Yeah, but because right now there's presently 100 seats. Oh. 50 yeah, but it's listed in the whole the district, school, but we have 50 and 50. We have 50 seats at middle school, oh. 50 seats at high school. Right. Should that be 25, 25? The price, you see, it's just half of the price. It's just half of the price. So it's so still it leaving 25. 25 here, 25 at the high school, or all 50 at the high school? In the budget book, I put... Um, 25, 25. So essentially, I think, I, I think when we when we spoke, yeah. when we spoke to when we said let's go and just split that in terms of the line items at the middle school and high school, so that it's not just strictly coming from a high school or strictly from the middle school. But this is not doing away with VHS altogether. No, no, no. So, what I remember from from many years ago was this was actually put in place. So kids weren't in study halls, and it was that started in the high school, and then the high school, and and, and it was a, it for six thousand dollars, we had we we were servicing fifty students a year, and they were getting half credit for it for that for that class because it's a semester class, um, and for six thousand dollars we can't we can't put a teacher in front of kids so. No. So I, I would hate to see this go at any capacity because we're going to have less electives and less, I mean, I, I just feel that I feel pretty strongly about this. Um, another reason that, and, and another example of what our kids can use their Chromebooks for. Um, I'm gonna, I know I just, I'm sure there's a lot more. I really, we are quickly approaching nine o'clock. We said we would give the public another opportunity to have their forum. And we have a tremendous amount of things on our agenda also to cover tonight. So I want to make sure people understand what is in here in terms of the high school and district. I don't want to stop anybody from um, giving their ideas, but I do want to move our meeting. So can I um, say one, one Yes, more? you can. Just because the schedule does open up. So for GEM, it's intervention and enrichment. So it doesn't mean that the VMS students, if we didn't have it, would then go back and would be in a study hall because we have more opportunities for GEM, then that could be more of enrichment classes than more intervention classes. <coughs> Thank you. I have a quick question, if you don't mind. No. Sure, for Mr. Dudak, actually. Do we charge our students to park at the high school? We do not. And no. the reason why I'm asking is because transportation is free, so every student can take the bus. They don't need to drive. And I'm just looking for ways to make money, get money, like if we were to charge students to park at the high school if they want to drive, would that money, where would that money go, I guess? Or could we use that money if that's an option? Or just throwing, outside the box. I'm just throwing out an idea to make a little extra money. I mean, I, I'll be honest, I think we talked about this maybe three or four years ago. And, uh, you know, I know certain campuses are, have, you know, parking spots are, are limited. We have plenty of parking. I, I mean, that could be some revenue, uh, depending on, on the committee, on, on how they want. I don't think people would oppose it tremendously. Um, but, you know, if it could re generate some money, I, I think that's something that's, that's a possibility. Because we do issue out parking permits with tags official tags, but they're free. <laughs> <laughs> they can paint their space, do all those fun things. Okay. Well, that's nice. um, Thank in the you. high school, we are looking at a reduction in, in teachers. Um, and no, it says new ELA, but it's news ELA. Oh, it's okay. the news, news ELA, news ELA curriculum. Uh, program and educare program, reducing the cheerleading team, 
reducing some athletic and music stipends, and it would increase class size, and it would eliminate electives. Did anybody have any questions for that while Mike is sitting in the hot seat? I guess in this list of things, I don't see cheerleading yeah, or athletic, 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 athletic things right. unless it's under some. Remember several meetings ago, we cut the athletics to a certain number. That's how we make it. Okay, so I want to make sure that wasn't cut. misinterpreted because we didn't cut athletics. We kept them where they were this year. So they have not had a reduction this year. Band and athletics were cut 20% for this current school year. When they submitted their budgets to us, the athletic budget was back up to the $250,000 with its 20% back in its budget. When I made the motion to keep them at $180,000 out of our expense, it was to keep them on a level funded budget from this year. There was no cut to athletics from this year to next year. There was not a cut. We have not put any, any reductions in the athletic lines we this did. year. We did. If, if, even from her proposed budget. From her proposed budget. We're, we're cutting everyone's proposed budget. Every budget that came to us as a proposed budget, and we had a 13% a increased budget, has been reduced. All we did was hold athletics at $180,000, which was a, was a level funded budget from this year. There was no reduction. There was no reduction. We didn't sit here and say we're cutting athletic stipends or transportation or or any of the such, which is listed here as a music reduction. So if you look at page 99 on this printout you brought us tonight, this year's certified budget that we're operating our music on is 95759 and this, the, the reduced budget for FY19 is 87421 If you go to page 95, the athletic budget proposed was 193. We brought it down to 180,000, which is the same certified budget as this current year. Mm -hmm. Eighteen. Reflect. Because for the certified budget, we just reduced no. the number. You have seventy-five thousand dollars in user fees that she subtracted through the lines. If if, if uh, everybody remember. Um, for the certified budget, we just reduced the number. We didn't provide the, the solutions how to reduce the number. But we kept them level funded from this year. They did they, not, they, that they is they not reduce. the case on music. They do, if not 20%, it's 15% to 18% cut. Um, Joe Tosti goes through everything with me. It was like $14,000 cut. From I don't, her, what year? From her budget. I, I, don't, I don't know if you could level fund the athletic budget or because your stipends are increasing. I mean, well, you what, same one, thing two, with three. music. Correct. Same thing with music. Mm -hmm. But we're looking at we're looking at almost ten thousand dollars on this certified budget. But on this list, you have over thirteen thousand. Fourteen thousand five hundred ninety-four. Fourteen thousand five hundred ninety-four. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jim. So it, it just needs to be equitable from one one extracurricular to the other but and the question like tammy said is where it says reduce cheerleading team and athletic stipends There's none listed. we didn't There's do that list. we didn't reduce those yeah. and they're not on this list it doesn't look like it was reduced athletics yeah it's 180 180. it's because there's seventy five thousand dollars in user fees into the line items but when you so I just because so when when and I met on athletics early in this year so I had a I have a list that I received from when in February of 18 and the cheerleading stuff had cheerleading comp fall cheerleading advisor winter cheerleading advisor choreographer music and uniforms but but when I look at page 94 I only see fall cheerleading advisor. There's a winter one. Oh, is there? Oh, sorry. Oh, I see it. So, I mean, if, you're, if we're looking specifically at cheerleading. Well, we uh, aren't. You, we it's on this it list. Yeah, it's on that has list. never been a conversation here. I would personally question that as cutting well, we're, a, I mean, we're, a primarily we're, girls sport, but I. 
guess. I mean, so though. the cut was fall cheerleading squad, which had about 10 or 12 girls that went to the football games. That's that's specifically what the cheerleading cut was. Cut the fall team? That was the fall, which is a, a relatively new, you know, we always, always have winter. Winter is the, the competitive cheerleading, the basketball team. That's what you see so during winter. When football, football came on board, there was an interest of, of young ladies that wanted to go and cheer at football games specifically. Mm -hmm. um, we had a volunteer coach do it the first year, and then we added that into the budget, I believe, two years ago or last year. Um, and you know, we're in, but we're in budget season, so people so, were asking me to cut from everywhere. So we looked at athletics. We went back down from 20 to 18 games in terms of the max. Um, I mean, at, at one point, I believe last year, we we looked at uh, if you look at basketball, the max amount of games that you can play is 20. We cut that down to 18 to make it fair. Volleyball was 20. It was down to 18. Uh, soccer was the max number that you can play in the MIA is 18. We went down to 16. So we were looking at how do we still maintain programs but also cut. And uh, honestly, I think some of the coaches, when you talk with baseball or softball, appreciate 18 versus 20 in a season that's so short. And you know, you're looking to, to play games in the rain and so forth. Yeah. So I don't think that was a significant impact. Okay. We didn't cut programs. We just cut two games, which affected – your officials and your transportation, mm -hmm. which I believe we were able to save like eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars um, from that. Can I ask a question? Is there a difference when we say band and band money and band cuts versus music, meaning the music program that is in the school? There is a significant difference. Yes. No. Between band and music. So when you say or? band and you say the kind of the extracurricular or the stipends or the right. music stipends. Mm -hmm. Are you talking? Is there a difference? Um, well, we do. We well, we do have instructional supplies that our music department asks asks for. So, if we we have talking about marching band, wind ensemble, our choir, music tech, and music theory, those are specific courses that Todd teaches, and he asks for instructional materials. And then you also then you have to me, I guess, the music program is the extracurricular. So I, I guess I would I would look at it as your PE and wellness courses and what they need for classes specifically. And you have the athletics, which is the outside extracurriculars with, with coaching and the additional stipends that they have. So Mike, I just wanted to clarify, we just got new line items. All cheerleading is in there. That's why we didn't no, no, that, that no, was your I, intent. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. just to, so again, I was just I, want to clarify. I did, I did this. I wasn't going to do this because we don't have the final words on this. So this takes a lot of time to put yes, in. Yes, I in the last that. five hours, I just uh, didn't have time to massage the. I don't want anybody to feel defensive. <laughs> I just want Mike to know why we asked that specific okay. question because it wasn't on this list that we got in our packet, right. but it is on this that you so graciously got to us here. So that's why we were. Really sure. like a little sure. bit more for clarification. No, and, and to be honest with you, with 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 I think our our music and athletics, um, we're trying to maintain as much as we can. Um, you know, there are certain things that if you really dissect, you know, do we need brand new baseball bats every single season? Uh, I mean, I think right now we're talking luxuries. Um, you know, we're looking at game balls, we're looking at game jerseys, we're looking at new uniforms to stay with the same rotation that we've been talking about. You know, next year I think the only thing that we're getting for new new uniforms is cheer, the cheerleading squad in the winter. Um, it, it, you know, we're we're not look. I mean, luckily we have some coaches that um, either resigned and we could start at a step one because there is three steps in in coaching um, that could save you know eight nine hundred dollars if you go from step two to one. Um, so we try to be as realistic as possible with that. And once we get into playoffs, and if, if our budget doesn't have that in there, just like you know our girls' and boys' teams made it to the districts, there's additional costs to busing um, that you know we try to put that money in there as much as possible and not go red um, in terms of that. And I just want to clarify also as a, as a sports teams, when we talk about reducing the games, for some teams it's not a bad thing, but 
the, in order to get into playoffs, you have to win a certain percent. So the more games you have, better the chance. better it is for your team, to better chances that you're going to yep, progress. So absolutely. in day-to-day, -day it doesn't impact them, but it does impact them at the end. My question, I guess, for athletics is just looking at girls' basketball, for example, we have a very small number from JV to varsity. Mm -hmm. I don't foresee that changing with the people who are going to BVT this year. Do we need three coaches for that? Can we get rid can we potentially cut the assistant varsity coach since that group is in the that, same that, gym at so, the same time? So that assistant varsity coach is not a stipend that um, they get paid for. That was actually split between the varsity and assistant. Oh, okay. I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, we, we don't pay – uh, most of those are volunteer. If the mm -hmm. varsity oh. coach says, I want an assistant coach, and they want to pay through their stipends, that's that's their own prerogative. Oh, good, yeah. to know, good to know. I didn't yeah, know that, absolutely. Mike. Thanks. Just yeah. um, because you were talking about basketball specifically, and I know this is totally off topic, but you were not – I don't think you were here when uh, Ms. Tossie was here last time. And specific to basketball, I had asked her to – look into a possible co-op with Uxbridge for our girls' JV team. I was just wondering if you could follow up with her to see if that has been something she's been able to, because they did not have, they didn't even field a team this year. And we've always, we, we keep they, getting. They, they, have a, they had a varsity. Uxbridge did not have a JV basketball. girls' team. Okay. And we keep okay. getting waivers. So if you could just touch base with her. Um, I do have one other question for high school. Start time change after school shuttle savings? Mm -hmm. That's just another proposal that we've we've put on the table again outside the box right now if you look at the athletic budget and transportation we have a fall shuttle and a spring shuttle a fall shuttle brings middle school students over to the high school campus um, to participate in JV field hockey um, and anything else that's popping up volleyball because we're you know, we're not asking parents of middle school, uh, middle school parents to go and bring their middle school parent uh, students over to the high school. It's the same thing in the spring when we have track and field. Their track and field students that are middle school come over to the high school. So we're paying 3,500 plus 25. We're paying six thousand dollars in after school shuttles to ship athletes from the middle school over to the high school. So one of the thoughts were was to look at rather than having students at the high school be dropped off in the morning first and then go to the uh, I'm sorry from high school first and then middle school and then the same thing after school if we had middle school students dropped off first and then go to the high school after there's no need for a shuttle in the afternoon does that make sense yeah, yeah. I'm mm -hmm. sorry I'm just no, that makes total sense. Right. completely spent so I, I'm, I don't know if I'm making complete sense so that so there there's a little change um, but it would be middle school would start earlier, high school would start later by 15 minutes. People could say it's a cost savings with shuttle. People could also talk about the, the trend with high schools starting later and, mm -hmm. and elementary or lower levels starting earlier developmentally. Yep. Um, Ashland High School, they start, I believe, at 8.30 yep. in the morning. So it would be a 7.50 start and 7.35 start at the middle school. Again. People are looking at how do we save some money. Mm -hmm. We just found six thousand dollars with a. I think some people would say it's a slight change. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Um, as far as district wide, it's a reduction of classroom computers and projectors, interactive learning and Mike. assessments. Thank you, Mike. But you Thank understand you. The, the cuts with teachers at the high school as well. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um and some PD and essentially computerized applications, IXL, Brain Pop. Is the STARS reduction in a particular grade or across grade levels? All grade levels. All grade levels. So we wouldn't have it or we just have a lower version of it? We would not have it at any grade? At any grade. It's not even the middle school. Wiped off the map. Why does it feel like we're paying a lot more than that for this issue? This is only 17 savings. It's a, that was no, we're in the 30s. No, that was it for the year. Yeah. Okay. Um, it. Are there any general comments before I invite the public to? We again will revisit this on our May 
thirtieth meeting next Wednesday. So, yeah, I think I mean, this between is now not, and we then have a lot of some more notes thought <laughs> process and notes to take. But um, I invite anyone who would like to comment. Yes, please. <laughs> um, I hate that this has become a them versus us from it's Millville's fault to it's Blackstone's fault. I'm a Millville resident. I'm on staff at Millville Elementary. I dislike when we are told that we're the, we're the deciding votes because we're not all the deciding votes. Um, I would love to give everybody the money and I would love to reorganize the schools. But I would love to see a plan. I think somebody stated that you've come to us twice with trying to change the regional agreement. One time is with no specifics, which was maybe seven or eight years ago, and there were no specifics given. And, that, and we, I believe Melville said no. The next time you came and you said that the regional agreement could be changed by the school committee at will. I believe is that was the last time. I don't know how it was worded, but it was worded in such a way that all that was going to be changed was one line in the regional agreement, which would give the school committee, you guys, carte blanche to change any which way the schools. That's the way I understood it. Maybe I'm wrong. But, and I believe that was the reason that the town said no yet again, because there were no specifics given of how the divisions would be made. Um, I just, so I, I <laughs> It's very, very hard to be a Millville resident these days because it feels like we take the brunt of the problems with the towns, the problems with the schools. I'll accept my responsibility, but I don't think it's just us. You guys stated that you asked Blackstone for 1.9 million, and they didn't give that to you either. Mm -hmm. They pulled back also. So to say only Millville gets to vote on this, I think is unfortunate because all it does is put Millville versus Blackstone. We're all one regional school district. We all need to pull in one direction. Um, secondly, I hate the fact that we fight uh, athletics versus band. They both bring kids into this district. They both enhance their education. I hate that it's one or the other. But if cuts are going to be made, they need to be to both. Mm -hmm. When I came up here previously, I said I was the treasurer for the BMMA. The BMMA pays for a lot of things, such as uniforms for the kids that are partially paid by parents. We pay for a lot of other things that I don't think athletics gets paid by their, for lack of a term, booster club. So I, and I don't want to say don't cut my band and don't cut my athletics, but I know they have to be cut somewhere. But I'm just asking that we are all pulling in one direction and that if, if cuts are being made, they're being made equally. Mm -hmm. The last marching band I can say was 80 kids strong. I don't think any other team, and please say that I'm wrong, has that many kids on it. And that's middle school, versus middle school and high school. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gabby. Anyone else? Okay, we'll continue on in our agenda. Uh, I want to confirm with folks that, oh, consent agenda A, we have warrants, we have a field trip request and minutes of the meeting. I will entertain a motion to approve consent agenda A. So moved. Second. Moved by Tammy, seconded by Jack. Um, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, there is a, will be a school committee meeting on July 9th. Um, that will be our meeting to close out the FY18 uh, books. Uh, we need a time for that meeting. Anybody? I know there are some people who cannot be here. Let's do it fairly early. July 9th. What? Another earlier one. Another early one? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. What is the 9th? July 9th is, is a Tuesday? Monday. Monday? Mm -hmm. It's a Monday? Monday. Yes, it is. Monday. It's a Monday. What time Monday. would Wen be ready for us? 
We do it in her already. Well, when's always ready? Early is five for me. Yeah. <laughs> early. Sorry. We're going to have a morning meeting. 5.30? Uh, okay. we 9th of July. 7 a.m.? Maybe. I could have made that. I one. could do early. <laughs> Jack, seven a.m. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Jack. Jack's like five five thirty. Day of work. Five thirty. July. Five thirty is good. Okay. There are no objections. Five thirty. Where's July that gonna be? On camera. Here. 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 Uh, there was a sur little survey going around. Hopefully, it made it all the way around to the committee to express your interest um, <laughs> in serving on subcommittees and trying to get some of that. Going again. Um, also, in your path, oh, did you go anywhere? Did you get this year? Yeah, um, in your packet, there is um, school committee operational procedures, kind of little manual from MASC, and in the back of it is a survey about how we think the operations are working and should. Um, I did a separate copy of that, and it's on the top of the packet for you. So you can keep the one for yourself, and just at some point, maybe by the next meeting, go through that and add your notes or comments to that, please. Um, we do need to come up with a school committee workshop date with MASC. It'll be a Saturday, um, the last Saturday in July, or the first or second Saturday in August, um, kind of a <coughs> 9 to 2 time frame, but I'm going to suspend that for tonight. And please come back with um, your possible dates at the next meeting. Uh, we have in front of us uh, option, a motion to extend the retirement of uh, retirement benefit to Unit A. We had given till May 30 something of May, and so the option would be to extend that to June 8, potentially hoping that other people may take us up on the retirement option, and it should be in here somewhere. Mm -hmm. So early retirement incentive. Um, does anybody want to move to extend that to the 8th of June? Give people more time. How many did we get? Three, I believe, on the May 1st deadline. Oh, it was May 1st. And you're still recommending that it's paid out of next year's budget? A payment after July 1st. Of the three that did take us up on it, the savings of them having done so compared to the salary savings are significant. Mm -hmm. Was that on that sheet you, we were just looking at? Was that up? right? That was on there or no? The impact of. Yeah, okay. Would somebody like to do that? I'm just concerned with the amount of money we keep putting into our next year's budget that we're already looking at a negative 1.5 million on. Do you feel there are other members that didn't take advantage of it before May 1st that are out there? And what would the difference be for them doing it now? Well, it would be just if there were if there were folks who. Um, were on the fence before that would give them an opportunity to to take advantage of the program over the next two weeks. That's all. If no one does, then there's nothing lost. If if anyone does, <laughs> there is, you know, potentially a sixty or sixty five thousand dollars savings per per person who would retire. Mm -hmm. There are no guarantees. I don't know of anyone. It was simply something to just put out there. It also, it also helps us in our planning because if somebody does take advantage of it by June 8th, we essentially know approximately, and we know what that cost is, but we also know what that savings is in terms of potential hiring. So it does help us in factoring this budget. But they did already have the opportunity. Okay. Yes, on the May 1st. So what course. amount are we looking at paying out after July 1st of this year? <coughs> 75 by 3. Yeah, 22.5. But we saved 280, 240. Because those aren't being filled. I just I'm, feel like we shouldn't spend any money that we don't have. But what we he's saying is we save 
if someone takes them up on that offer, it counterbalances itself to our yeah, in our so favor. So and we're paying them out a seventy five hundred dollar amount. That but we we're not have. paying someone paying them exactly. sixty. Th you know, we're saving sixty. Th well, maybe if we have to replace them, depending on who it is, then you pay a first step teacher versus a retiring a retiring teacher, teacher which right. can be significant. Your savings is in the rehiring, not in the re <coughs> in the retiring. Correct. But it is substantial savings. Or possibly in not replacing. Right. right. So and, and yes, so I think the offer to have the offer is just right. So moved. Moved by Tammy. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> second. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So do we have enough eyes for a quorum? Did Aaron go at four? Did we have four? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Also, let's give it a state. And a proposed and a nay. An abstention. Abstention. So yes. You are a yes or no? Yes. yes. So yes, we did. Okay, sorry, I didn't hear so I wasn't looking up and I didn't hear her, so <laughs> I need my lips. didn't know where you <laughs> fell. <laughs> okay. Um and so then the other question is, do we uh, offer a retirement benefit to Unit C? Um, yep, that should be right behind. So this was filed under thinking out of the box or, or something like that. We have never done this before to offer uh, paraprofessionals. Um, this was just something that I came up with, I think, all by myself. So <laughs> I'll take the, the lightning rod on it. Um, but when we looked at trying to reduce staff within the paraprofessional part of Unit C, if we did it by seniority, which we would have to do to reduce force, the newest folks that we have hired are all working. They're highly trained in behavior and apply behavioral um, management. So if there were folks who were uh, close to thinking about retirement, that they would have the opportunity to take advantage of it. Um, again, the savings would be in not replacing them. Mm -hmm. And it would be an early retirement incentive to them of $3,500. Right. Which again, I echo, is money we don't have. How many? So, so I had already sent you my questions right. about how many. How many are even at a point? Uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Eligible to retire. Eligible, eligible to retire. Thirteen para professionals that have been a twenty-year employee that are eligible under M. But only a handful are Two. at are at the maximum. So that's the total that are eligible under in the eyes of Worcester Regional. And two, when? Two is close to the maximum. Right. Okay, well, sorry, one more time. So it says you must be eligible to retire from Worcester Re Regional Retirement Systems. How many employees are eligible for that? 13. 13. But only two are close to their maximum. Correct. And do we have any? Do we have any who have already expressed? So this says all members, even those who have already declared a future retirement date. So has anybody in that unit already said they're going to retire? Now they're getting this bonus amount. No. Nobody has. Nobody's retiring from that unit. No. Okay. And how many um, paras are we trying to reduce from our budget? Well, I think there's no magic number. I think that we're looking at um, because there are none on our list. There, there aren't correct. any. Correct. On so the far, there list. aren't any. This, this was just one way to reduce the staff without having to use, lose the, the folks that we are are desperate for in their training and their skills. That that's all. Certainly, whatever the wish of the committee is, but it's just a chance to, if there were two, three, four folks who said, you know what, that's significant enough to make me consider it. And if we didn't have to replace them, that's eighteen, nineteen thousand times.
however many folks. But do we know if we don't have to replace? We don't until we see who they are. Because looking at the, it wouldn't be a savings in rehiring a new person not versus not enough. No. not enough to cover that. That's a, that's a roll of the dice. Yeah. And, and the reality is, if if they're not on this list already, we probably need them, based on yeah, there's no based on what we're seeing uh, based on that first page of your cuts for mm -hmm. special mm -hmm. ed um if they're not on there now yep. then we probably need them would be my Don't guess and again own. special ed is ever changing but um so this is only extended to the paraprofessional members of unit c correct. so no custodial staff or anything like that correct okay and are we creating room for a grievance by not offering it to the full unit they can grieve it. They can grieve it. But the superintendent has the rights to offer to whomever. So worst case scenario is we're looking at 13 employees that jump ship mm -hmm. because they've been here for a very long time. That's a $45,000 payout to us. I mean, with a $1.5 million negative right, budget. We have to not replace three of them just to break even. It We've is a already, roll of the dice. Yeah. We've so already put we so much on the other side of July 1st that I just, I don't, does, yeah. I, I yeah, think no, they'd be retiring if they were ready yeah, to do that. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. It would, that's fair. It was just an, a thought, yeah. A note of this one? So, nobody makes a motion. It is a note. It's a note. <laughs> so I'm not hearing that. All right. Um, we, um, Need a motion to reconfirm um, the administrator that we have in our district an administrator of special education. We don't know who or what that will be, but we do have um, someone who has responsibility for the administration of special education. So, actually, what your note said was he's recommended rescinding the original vote or Either a vote or. to affirm. Yeah. Whichever somebody would like to propose. Was there any input from Dr. DeFalco on this is a position or a title? Mm -hmm. So just um, for some background, on a previous meeting, um, based on uh, well, going way back to a previous meeting, uh, the committee voted to not renew the current director of special education's contract um, for the upcoming year. That was the, to not renew. At a subsequent meeting, um, the committee uh, made a motion to uh, not to cut the position until July 1 uh, when the new uh, superintendent was in place and, and in Massachusetts general law, you cannot cut a administrator of special ed. So you cannot cut a position, even though it was technically not even for a day, I guess. But um, so we either need to rescind that motion or um, affirm that we will have an administrator of special education in the district. Well, I make a motion that we rescind the original vote. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I just think it would be a bit easier to rescind rather than okay. reconfirm that we have a position and then define a position under a title separate from that. Probably just easier to rescind it. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wanted to put this out there that the reason we did that at the time was that we wanted, we had discussed previously that that position may cover more than director of special education which may include curriculum or other subpopulations within the district and so mm -hmm. the purpose was to rename it a different name with more responsibility not think that we could run this district without a <laughs> certified administrator of special education services so we weren't totally wacky that day and, um. and, according, <laughs> and according to um, Massachusetts general law based on the size <clears throat> of our district we can have an administrator of special ed who does other things so they can have others but we do have to have a administrator may I just confirm ed. with Al, I guess Alan does that director of special education have to have it 
in Massachusetts, because again, I'm a Rhode Island person, have a separate certificate of special education, like an administrator has a principal certificate. Does a there special a, ed director have a there is separate a special certification? Okay. For special ed. Thank you. So the motion on the floor to rescind the previous vote. Any other discussion? Second. I did. Oh, you okay. did. I'm sorry. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? And I will abstain. I will, did not vote on the first vote. Um, health insurance memo of understanding. When will explain to us. I don't know if you know that when. But. Yeah, she she does. <laughs> um, I'll just read it quickly, um, and and when can explain the rationale behind it. So the current language in both Unit A and Unit C simply says the employer will contribute 50% towards the cost of whatever health insurance plan, i.e. individual or family, a retiree had subscribed to as of December 1st, immediately preceding the retirement. The proposed change, which again was vetted by MTA and the unions, the units, reads, the employer will contribute 50% towards the cost of the health insurance plan a retiree subscribes to. The retirees who retire after June 1st of 2018 will continue to have the ability to modify their enrollment during their retirement through open enrollment periods and or if a qualifying condition occurs. They win. Okay, my turn. <laughs> so the the current language and the, the so-called past practice in this district um, didn't allow the um, union members, I mean, retirees to change plan after their retirement, unless it's a change to, from a PPO, which is a higher cost plan, to HMO, which is a lower cost plan. And uh, in that case, some employees choose to take insurance through the district the year before they retire to have that flexibility or to enroll to in a more expensive plan to, ha to be flexible for future life changes. So um, some that cost uh, district a lot of money um, because we are paying 75% of their health insurance cost, oh, 50% after retirement of their health insurance cost. 75 during, 75 during the last year of their um, employment. So um, by removing this, um, by changing this um, language, um, we enable retirees to modify the plan for um, the future changes and the, the MOA will avoid about 20,000 to 27,000 um, for the, the potential cost to the district next year. And we'll continue to save district money. And the MOA is just for June 1 of this year through the end of the contract, June 30th of 19. Well, but June 2020 for units. In one more year for unit C. Correct. So my understanding is if somebody's about to retire, the year that they're about to retire, they have to essentially get on a plan if they want to have potential for that plan after retirement. But some may not necessarily need to be on that plan. They're just planning for a plan. <laughs> so if they don't have to be on the plan and they can choose during an open enrollment or a qualifying condition, which means life change um, type of a thing, then we could potentially save the 75% that we were paying them when they had to select something in order to be able to have it later. Did I get that right? Yep. Yep. So can, can I just give a scenario to make sure I yeah. have it right? So my husband's working. Right. I'm a year out of retirement. Right. He's going to continue working, so I don't really need his health care that year. Right. But then he retires. And this one then, may be better. And then now I, a year later or so, how many years I get to be alone while he's still working, then I can come back to and say, I, I, now I need coverage because my husband has now retired. Right. Correct. Okay. Got it. Whereas Thank before, you. you had, if you thought that that was a possibility, you, well, not keep it, you had to, if you weren't having it in the first place, you were on your husband's, mm -hmm. but now you're your year from retirement, you're like, ooh, I better get it just in case, you know, he decides to quit on me or whatever. Um, 
you had to have it that year to safeguard yourself. Okay. And in that year that you had to have it, we were paying 75% of it. You have a question, I see it. No, I think I wanted to try to point something else out, but I might be incorrect. This means that our current retirees can change. Weren't we hoping for that? Um, that's anybody retire after June. So this is only take June first. So anyone who's retiring as of June first. Weren't we going to put something into place that allowed them to? This is it. Okay. It wouldn't go back to five years ago if you retired and not wanted to try, but. I think it's a win-win both for the district and for the employee. And I would recommend the, the adoption of the MOI. We have to do both of them separately. We have to do them separately? Um, so moved. Um, you can. They're both the same wording, but you yeah. can, because of the different years, you can do that. Okay. So I will move as written the proposed memorandum um, for Unit A. Do we even need a motion for the MOI? But yeah, so. but yeah, we do. But um, is there a second to the second. motion for you? Okay, so moved by Aaron, seconded by Bethany to uh, offer a memo of understanding with Unit A for uh, Article Twenty One Insurance. Is there any discussion? Yeah. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions. Okay. Want to do the same? Sure. So moved as written for Unit C. Okay. Second. By, second by. I'm sorry. Bethany. Mm -hmm. So moved by Aaron, second by Bethany to offer a memor memorandum of agreement for Unit C, Article, oh, there's is different. Oh, gosh, 16, 16. insurance. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. You are on. Yes. Thank you very much, Mrs. Reggio. Due to the lateness of the hour, I wanted to uh, go right to the leadership team, the oh. building principals who have done yeoman's work this year and it seems it just keeps getting busier and busier each day um, so you have in your packets the, the school improvement plans the handbook changes and um, summer reading I guess the easiest way would be to call up uh, Paul and sure. Carol and Steve first and if there's any discussion or questions they could answer them and then we ask for Okay, Mike. First, yeah, we wanted to go to Mike first. Mike first. That's what Producer we wanted to do. Producer, just let me oh, know first? we're going to Mike, Mike first. first. Yeah. Mike and Tanya together, just Mike. Just Mike. <laughs> oh, we'll do just. I don't know why they volunteer me first, but, you know, uh, because they need a guinea pig, and they want guinea. you to go home. Are we, we're doing everything high school right now. Yep. We're doing everything high school. Improvement plan, <laughs> handbook changes. <laughs> Oh, welcome again. I know. Did, did everyone know that today is the middle school lockdown? We're here all night. Yep. <laughs> We're the chaperones. Oh, only if we get to be in the scooters and hide on the roof. Time we yeah. This would only be a few hours, so. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I, I believe you have all the information um, that was requested. So rather than me present uh, things that you may already know of because you looked at it last night or this morning, I will field any questions that you have regarding summer so reading and math, school improvement plan, and um, whatever else we were talking about. So I'm just going to speak up and be honest, and I have not looked at this at all because I was looking at the pages of numbers all day. Yeah. So with that being said, would it be better to have him present what he can and then revisit this at our next meeting? Or, or vote and, and put it in place on it so we do have time to digest yeah. it but i think I, we should still hear from him right now but i mean i just would hate for them to have to no i don't think back. that but i don't think they should have unless we have questions so never mind so i shouldn't so say I did, they don't have to come um, back they're, they're the, pretty um, similar summer reading and, the, and i tried um what and i um hope to read this one of those books because it's oh, yeah. interesting yeah. one i was concerned that um, half the high school population has probably already read because they had to read it in the middle school, the Wonder, the, um, wonder book. Yeah, Wonder was read. Um, so I hope that a lot of them don't choose Wonder and just take out their seventh grade report and write it all over again or whatever the case may be. But um, I did read through that and I had no issues with Great the book. So I'll just give you a brief summary with the summer reading. So I, I, again, there's been an evolution of how we do summer reading. Um, 
This year, with, with a, a teacher committee, we're looking at five books that revolve around community. The theme is community in some sort of way. I understand Wonder is on there. I know it's a lighter reading book, but I think what we found out in the last three, four, five years is that we're asking kids 9 through 12 to read a book, multiple levels. So we're having students choose a book that they feel is more comfortable for them. And I'll be honest with you, I think it's the, um, there's one book here that I found fascinating. So the, uh, Am, Am I Blue is a bunch of short stories. So it's not a complete 200 page novel that they're reading. So for those that like little chunks of material that they can read, um, that, 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 that's a great book that we're looking at. So again, I created a Weebly site. I know some people were looking at a physical packet. The Weebly site has our AP uh, summer assignments, our math in there, our five books that they can go and choose. And what we're going to do is have a community day where we're doing more community-based aspects of uh, celebrating what's out there and having students get out and do service learning projects on, on one day in, uh, in mid-September. But they, there's also an independent proposal. So if families if want, want to, to read something. Tale of Two Cities as the summer reading book, if they propose that uh, to Mrs. Shaughnessy, who's a department head, and she approves, then they can read Tale of Two Cities. And that's on the bottom. That's on the bottom of that, yes. that site. I see that. Okay. Um, the about the school improvement plan as a definitely think we have to come back with the high school handbook stuff. How are we in terms of deadline for printing stuff? Deadline for printing. They don't, well, they don't, anymore. It's they don't get one. They well, don't get one. Um, I, traditionally, they have been printed. I oh. am in full support of not printing a, a handbook. I, it's, we're one-to-one. -one. We have yeah. Chromebooks. We Budget, have something Budget called savings. the World what? Wide Web. Budget savings. Uh, PDF. Um, if we want to yeah. look to save, I don't know how much it costs to go and print out uh, handbooks, but I could probably tell you we could save $500. Yeah. Um, I don't do know why a student needs to carry a handbook there unless you do for whatever okay. place of employment that you are at. So I, that's another proposal that I think if it, we're thinking outside the box, I don't think a student needs to carry a handbook constantly with them. If they have a Chromebook, it's embedded on there. Yeah. I agree. Um, Other schools do require an electronic signature from a parent and a student saying they actually read it yeah. for that, what's right? for what that is worth. That, yeah. <laughs> we do that, don't we? So we do that. We have. Yeah. But I mean, I think that covers you to what? say they saw it. Of what the, changes I mean, the handbook is also a pass book, which is a hall pass. I'm exploring different options of how we do hall passes. Oh. Um, clipboard system. What's that? Clipboard system. Oh, there's clipboards. Can you do it? I think I there's various things of, of how we could look at that. Uh, I see bold prints here. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I can go quickly with with the handbook changes. I Is it just the bold print? Could, so we're, how we're Aaron and I apologize for talking over you, but Aaron and I are debating whether we make you come back or we try to go quickly. I said don't come the, back. She did say don't come back. <laughs> Don't make this four man come back. Well, just, next uh, week, I think we should do it. I think four nights in a row that we're out. So I don't know so, if, if you're looking for the leadership time. team to come back on Wednesday. I think yeah. that's senior banquet. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah it is. You want me to celebrate with seniors or be here? It's, no, uh, I'm, I'm here till celebrate 11 o'clock. Kids are so. more important than us. Celebrate with seniors. However, you would like me to uh, to uh, build. So, do so my time. Aaron says hit the highlights. Hit the highlights on the uh, handbook changes? Yep. Um, so handbook. So there really, um, I don't feel like there were a whole lot of different cha uh, changes, but um, just looking at um, dress code policy. So uh, when I spoke with the school committee or my school council about what dress code policy is, we're always looking at the language and the verbiage. And um, in, in years past, I've tried to create as neutral language as possible because I think if you read traditional handbooks on dress code, you hear about spaghetti straps and um, how short uh, skirts are and uh, various different elements. So I tried to make it as neutral as possible um, and give a little more to administration on what they feel is appropriate and what, and what isn't. So I'll give you a scenario. So we have 
in the handbook it says something about um, spaghetti straps. You can't have spaghetti straps, they have to be two inches wide. Um, and I had, we had a young lady who came up that was called in from a teacher who felt like it was inappropriate and looking at the letter of the law in the handbook, spaghetti straps were less than two inches. I didn't see an issue with it. She had a dress on that was down to her ankles. She had an appropriate uh, top that covered everything, but she had spaghetti straps. Uh, I told her it was okay. Um, but looking at the language that originally is in there, three inch inseams, spaghetti straps, it's all, t it's all geared towards a female student. So looking at what other schools are doing, um, I changed it in terms of respects individual rights of expression. However, it's expected that students will dress appropriately in school with consideration of public sensibility. That to me I think is very general and it gives me or Mr. Ducharme or teacher the right to go and say this is something that we feel is appropriate or not and allow us to go and make that decision without being handcuffed to specific language in the handbook. So everything above on the list is going away. It's the new. Changes are new. Yes. It's the new. But, I mean, some of it's similar, but right. there are, I mean, if you read it, I think it's a little more general and, um, and I think neutral from a dress code policy. I feel like we already did yeah, this. I, think it's great. I, I, I thought, I thought we already eliminated Don't you them. remember Wendy's um, dress and the strap? <laughs> I think as a parent, I, I'm freaking out because I don't know what, what Mike is going to think is appropriate for my daughter. Whereas if she does this and says three fingers wide, that's I can measure that. Because my, I think my definition of appropriate might be very different than Mr. Ducharme's or Mr. Dudax as a parent. I like I like measurable. But that's when they personally. that's when they contact you because it says like uncomfortably revealing no undergarments should be visible. But who's it uncomfortably revealing to is my question. Because as we know, even as parents you, you have been at a opinions. you have been at high school things. Yes. For some girls, <laughs> yes. uncomfortably revealing is very different than what I would say is uncomfortable for me to see. But if it says no so. undergarments you know, and visible, and tops and bottoms that. should meet. I, I, think I, can, that be in the, I can be in the um, minority, but I like measurable things for this because it's a wide range of what you get in a school. Snow suits for uh, being a high school teacher. We have the we have the fingertip rule. If you can touch your skin, mm -hmm. it's too short. Mm -hmm. It's measurable, and it's not my judgment versus the next teacher. Okay, and then and as just saying, but as a, but that's but what what as a parent that's with a very tall student, I her would arms say are that probably proportional. They are, though. they are. No, they aren't though. <laughs> they aren't though. That's the thing. There are some people who have wider span than they have shorter torsos. <laughs> like I said, I can be in but, the minority. Yeah. Do you think that I this is this is going to help? Your life, in, like the, I mean, obviously, I think, you're uh, thinking that I mean, this honestly, is a benefit. I need, I need support from parents and guardians, so yeah. that when you have a young man or young woman going to school, do you feel like it's appropriate? It's appropriate attire. So, if you're going to a public venue, is it appropriate? Mm -hmm. And you know, there are times that I've had to have conversations with parents about what I felt was appropriate or not. People look at the definitions of spaghetti straps to inseam to three inch. I, don't, I, I can't sit with the ruler to go and figure out what is. All, all I'm asking is that people, adults that have students or, or children are looking at and saying this to me is appropriate and, and valuing the professional opinion of somebody that's in our building. And I'll be honest with you, I use Linda Salome, my administrative assistant, who is a female, to go and address anything that we feel is inappropriate for a female student. And she'll let me know. And I, I, you know, I, again, you know, at some point, yoga pants were completely inappropriate. Five years ago, they were completely inappropriate. Kids wear yoga pants constantly. Um, it's 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 a different it's a different culture. It's you have things that happen that occur. I, I mean, I think if something looks uncomfortable, uncomfortably tight, or it looks uncomfortable to again, I don't know how descriptive you want to be, but you know, again, I think I, uh, the thing that caught my eye was the, the sweatshirts, and I guess the hood is is the no no head head covering. I guess it 
could be in there, but I really liked the fact that it said you can wear a hooded sweatshirt, you just can't have the hood on your head. Correct. Yeah, and that's, that's something that came from a parent that said, no, you don't want to say that you can't have hoodies, you just can't wear the hood, the hood on up. top. Right. Um, but that's gone now. Um, but it says no co head covering. Well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So that you was can there wear. Before. So, so that was in it. So but before it, it said students one. are not to wear hats, bandanas, or other head covering. Mm -hmm. But it also said students may wear hooded sweatshirts. However, the hood may not be on one's head. And I and and so if you're saying to me that head coverings means I can't wear the hood of my sweatshirt, I'll buy that. I just liked that the, it was very specific. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't go into a bank with a put it on right or sunglasses, sunglasses or hats. Or is that in inside and outside of the building? No, just in. I mean, just in the building and and after oh, school I mean, activities. I, after school. Um, Sports events. Anything that's in the building. I mean, if they go outside and they're watching a soccer game, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't address that. Um, put it in sweatshirts. What else do you have for us? Um, thank you. So the other, the other piece is um, looking at plagiarism, plagiarism and cheating. So I think plagiarism and cheating at one point, so I'll give you just a quick uh, sort of version of what that looks like. Students caught cheating for whatever that is. They receive a zero and they are suspended for three days. Um, they lose leadership roles, it's on their record and so forth. So when I look at other schools, some continue to do that. But I think if you're looking at plagiarism, um, I think that's a learning experience. I think that students that do plagiarize uh, do receive a zero, and we leave it at that, uh, essentially. Uh, and it's addressed with the, the young man or woman. Uh, parents are notified. It's on record that they plagiarized. Um, and then we look at it for in further actions for the second time that it does happen. Um, Plagiarism is very difficult these days. I think there's so many different resources that are out there. Um, it's definitely a learning experience, but I think the learning experience is a zero that students can get. Now, I did add language in there that it's that a teacher may allow students to go and make up an assignment. Again, for me, that philosophy is if there's a five-page paper that's worth the major assessment and the goal is for students to go and master a certain skill level or content area, they still need to go and, and complete that assignment and not just receive a zero and say, I'm done. Because that happens too many times and students are not truly learning specific content and skill. So in terms of plagiarism, we just felt there was too many whammies for that student. Um, so receiving a zero, I think, is, is lesson learned. Speaking with administration and being notified of what plagiarism is in forgery, then that, that to me, I think, is, is more than enough. Mike, was there another section Some Like, so what we're looking at, it says it read, and what it read doesn't seem to have any consequences listed. It was like, okay, it was just an so I'm looking at So I'm looking at page, page two. 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 So what it read was the what, where the little check marks are, but I don't see any kind of consequences in that box. It just kind of oh. tells you what plagiarism is. I see, yep. Um, so it did say something else before the consequences. Yeah. I, I like the new policy. Yeah. It did. So I, so I will tell you. Um, I don't know what it said before, My apologies. But I, like I don't it. think that the consequences are in there. But I think, I think first case of plagiarism is they receive a zero for the assignment. No chance to make that assignment up. They receive a three-day in-house suspension, and it's on their permanent record. Okay, and so that's being removed. So we're we're removing the uh, the in-house three-day in-house suspension. Yeah, because it's a reward. So I plagiarize and I get to miss all fifteen of my classes for the next three days. Mm -hmm. And again, I know it's lesson quote lesson learned, but I, uh, honestly, I think zero and understanding that. I mean, it's on. It, it, they receive that warning that it does happen again. It does happen a second time. And then we look at potential leadership positions. It's on their record for <coughs> plagiarism. I mean, I know certain schools and, uh, and colleges and universities, you get kicked out of high school or kicked out of college. Sure. But that to me is the conversation that we have when someone does get caught plagiarizing. Because sometimes it is blatant plagiarism. They take Google site, copy, paste, they put two pages, and it's in there. Some copy a sentence. And they, well, I, I rephrased it. 
Well, it's still plagiarism. So looking at the letter of the law, it's plagiarism. So they receive the zero, and they get the three-day in-house uh, in suspension. To me, it's a double whammy. We're hitting them enough with the zero in the conversations. It's a learning lesson. So I felt it's more than fair to be able to do that. Now looking at 37H and a half, and we're talking about suspensions, that kind of goes into the rest of this in terms of class cuts, central detentions, teacher detentions, tardiness per quarter, forgery. Um, so that is something where I, I, I know some people are going to say you're taking away suspensions away from students. They're not going to learn. I rather look at three hours to central detention, looking at taking away a support period that they're sitting and they're not hanging out with their friends at, in, the, in the library or having lunch. I think suspension rates for the high school is high. And if you look at what typically suspension should be for, I think it's for something that is a little extreme or we look at progressive discipline. It shouldn't be an in-house immediate. Now, there are certain things that we don't tolerate. We don't tolerate language. We don't tolerate uh, disrespectful behavior, uh, insubordination that's blatant. Um, I mean, there are more severe consequences. But think about being uh, tardy for class or tardy to school. At some point, it was an in-house. So you're tardy, and now you miss. Or being truant. You skip school. So guess what? We're going to give you a, three, a, a one day or a three day in house. And then if you do true and again, well, at some point it's going to be a three day out of school suspension. I don't know how much they're truly learning um, from that. So basically, we just looked at um, some of the, the, um, the student discipline measures. What truly is a significant impact that could lead to a suspension versus looking at Central detentions. Wow. Oh, good good night. Night. Uh, that's Funny telling me I'm done. But, but, um, <laughs> but that, that was the other piece in terms of that. So if you're looking at the cheating and plagiarism, so on page six, Tammy, yep. you'll yep, see it goes that back the first offense is three day, five five day in house, and three day out of school. Oh, suspension. okay. So that's your consequence. Is it possible for the number one B? So to your point, where you know you really wanted them to actually learn what they were doing in that paper. It could be, could one B be that they get to make up the assignment? Like, so you have one teacher that plagiarism really bothers. They're not going to give them the opportunity to make it up. And where you have somebody that has your philosophy, they're going to say, no, I think they should make it up for the 65. So, so one kid may get that opportunity, but the next doesn't, depending on what the role of the teacher. Well. It might depend on the role of teacher. It might depend on the, on the, the amount of the assignment or the amount plagiarized. You know, if I take a photo off of a Google site and I think it's just a pretty cool photo, but it's a copyrighted photo, that's as much plagiarism as copying a whole document. Um, if I use the photo, so if I use the wrong photo and the teacher says, "Oh, you could use that photo," yes, you can make it up. Versus I copied. You know, my whole essay, which is 50% of my grade, is, is copied. I, I, I guess I agree with that, but I, I mean, I don't know many teachers that are calling the plagiarism card on a Google photo. Well, but just well, so I would, trouble. so the language there for me, and again, maybe, maybe that's something that I need to coach teachers on. So if there's a five page paper and they took a couple sentences and put it in there, then that to me is an opportunity to go and redo the assignment and get at max and that's 65. Will now, you always now, have a say in it? Because it says teacher yes, and, yes, okay. Because then you yes. can make it. Yeah. And, and I'm it. honestly looking at trying to form a committee when that does happen. Unfor okay. I mean, fortunately, it doesn't happen a whole lot, Good. but I would like to get a bunch of educators together to talk about that. Because, <laughs> but the, the one piece that I don't think that we should allow redos is a simple homework assignment. Yeah. A student takes a homework assignment from another friend, they just got caught, at support period doing it, it's a zero. To me, a homework assignment is worth, you know, how much right. for, for a final assessment. That to me is, it's a zero, don't do it again, we're moving forward. It's, it's that assignment that's going to kill a, a student's third quarter grade, and it could kill them for the entire, not literally, it would, it would affect their passing mark for, for the final um, average. If that makes sense. Yep. That would be that would be myself and a bunch of teachers looking at what it is and what what do we feel is fail, fair and reasonable with the ultimate goal of quote learning and not 
quote, consequence, discipline, sure. uh, and so forth. Is this also the section that would cover like faking a parent signature? Um, so we do have, we do have forgery. There, right. there is a forgery. I didn't, look, so, I you look, on um, didn't look all the way to the back then. So, forgery, so, um, uh, so on, on page six, the consequences. so it's a one day, three day, and three doubt. I just did two, three, and four um, uh, hours of central detention. All right. Something you're familiar no, with, Jeff? Not me personally, no. <laughs> no. You didn't do that ever? Oh, no, I did. I just never got in trouble for it. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> of course. Oh, you forget, so you forget to get a progress report. seven reports, years, I think. <laughs> so, again, I didn't, I didn't change all of the, um, the actions, but I felt the ones, and again, I think there's a balance. There has to be some sort of, there, there's a balance. I needed to look at 37 inch and, and, and a half and three quarters to look at what is reasonable a reasonable action that would warrant a suspension. And in my mind, and some others, our suspension rate is relatively high from an in-house standpoint, and we needed to look at other options. And to me, if you, if you get into a physical altercation, there's drugs, there is uh, verbal abuse, there's harassment, that all warrants a higher, more than a warning and a two-hour central. But when we're looking at forgery, I mean, again, I'm not saying that, that that's, that's not a bad thing. But does that warrant a one day or two day or three day in-house or being truant and skipping school? Um, what is central, what, Mike? Uh, our office, uh, office attention. So after school? After school. And so what happens if they don't go to that? Um, is there they, another level? They get level? One, one hour additional. Yeah, oh. <laughs> Is that true? The night with us? Oh, correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Spending the night with us. Okay. There we go. Um, I will ask um, that at some point, if you can meet with Tammy, because I know our district policy and graduation requirements doesn't meet, isn't up to date. So we need to. I'll send it. To we need to do that. Yeah. But anybody have any other thing about the? We're going to be in the dark quick. So do we have any other questions about the revisions? And I will entertain a motion to accept the revisions as written. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Good to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, guys. Good night. Tanya. Oh, no. They're, fight. They're fighting. They're, fighting over. They're jockeying for position now. This is a shorter. There's a shorter. <laughs> this is the I think we said yeah, and then no, we didn't. Oh, we didn't. No, we didn't. Yeah. Are we doing school improvement plans? Because we, we didn't talk about Mike's. Improvement plans and we, <laughs> we don't. We don't, we don't okay. approve school improvement plans. We just look at them. Yeah. So I mean, we certainly need to read them, and we certainly need to talk about them and what they mean for our district improvement plan. But we don't, we can do that later. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I was like, we yeah. need to talk about it. No, we're good. Let's All right, where do, <laughs> where do you want to start? Who wants to start? Where do you want to start? Other than saying you want to go home, that's not an option. Okay. Why don't we start with our handbook changes? Again, there's really not a lot for us to review. There was very minimal changes. Um, but I do want to say that we had spent a significant amount of time actually talking about our absence policy. Um, and we, we hesitated to make changes. We know that the, the state has um, taken um, a very close look at accountability and the role that absenteeism plays in that. And I'll speak for me. I'm not as clear on that as I should be. So we decided to sort of table that for now, and and that will be a goal for next year. But but what, you know what, the way I'm handling it is, from the state, it's 10 percent now. Anything over 10 mm percent -hmm. needs to be, you know, reported on. So throughout the year, three times a year, I, I look at attendance, and at that point, say it's day 60. If over 10 percent of that, you get a letter home, and I do it again. You know, so, uh, like I said, three times during the year. So, but that's that. just a it's a rough rule of thumb it's not absolute you know if you have nine but you have lots and lots of tardies you might get a letter things like that but if there's extenuating circumstances you may not get a letter but we just use i just use 10 percent as like mm -hmm. a, a rough rule of thumb but again we don't have an absolute policy right now 
which it's really just a, a reminder letter and an awareness. Hey, do you know your child's been out 11 days this year? That's all. But. For, for us, it's created a lot of dialogue when we've sent the letters uh, with the families, kind of letting them know where things are in regards to uh, tardies, dismissals, uh, absenteeism. And um, the families have been really great in a lot of cases where they just call up and say, you know, I didn't realize we've done that much or um, the medical and legal reasons that are excused or automatic, so I've kind of understood. But it, it does uh, initiate a conversation, which uh, has been a, a good thing at, at our level in terms of the elementary level. The, the key is, as the kids get older, it does have an impact when they get to the secondary level and the understanding that it's important to be in school. Um, there's no better place to learn than to be in your school. So. Uh, that's that's the driver for us is sending that message at a young age and working in partnership with the family um, but when you get down to, like I said secondary uh, credits and things that you work for as a student toward graduation there's a lot more at stake so uh, we did look at the attendance and uh, discussed it quite a bit um, I think it's more of a topic that needs to be revisited in the summer retreat uh, as a leadership team as to what district-wide everyone wants to do going forward up and down the board. Um, attendance has been an issue uh, from time to time. We, we also send three letters uh, at different points. Uh, I use the 10% rule, but I also go right around the try. So when the first mm -hmm. trimester closed or the second trimester closed, I'd send a letter. And you know, we got close to May, probably about a week ago, I think we sent our last round. Just so people are informed and know what's happening tomorrow. Um, in terms of other changes with the dismissal, this is really more uh, changing the pages and making sure we had the accurate policies in place, uh, changing of penalty to uh, verbiage, uh, verbiage change to consequences. Um, and the deficit accounts, uh, this is something that other committee members in the past have taken up as. Uh, an issue the school nutrition department is very cognizant of uh, the revised language that's needed in the fact that there's laws coming onto the books and bills being considered at this time so uh, we didn't get that language for this uh, handbook change but we are aware and looking for that from the school nutrition department at a later date once the bill kind of moves through uh, for consideration and hopefully adoption uh, those those probably were the bigger issues that we kind of were trying to tackle the, the policies you voted on this year, any policies or things that you as a committee have taken up uh, will be included in the back of our document. Uh, Life-threatening allergy, critical diseases, the nurses weighed in on that. Uh, gym sneaker policy on page 35, again, uh, we, we took everything that had been considered to date and kind of brought that into the back of the handbook. And so that you're aware, um, we, we don't print out our handbook unless it's a request. Uh, but we do send home in the first few days in the student packet um, a sheet for parents to sign off saying that they have read the handbook with their child and the child signs off as well. Did you get some cool signatures? Any questions about their policy changes? Or handbook changes, not policy changes. Um, yes, the wellness committee is looking at that deficit account. We may not have it done for the year, but we'll send notice to everybody when we do. We, we don't deny students who, yeah. that was a big Well, and that's the big thing. That's our, the bottom line. Yeah. So, but we do need a better way to handle the deficit. Yeah. At one point, that's no longer a place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A motion to accept the handbook changes? Second. Seconded by Jack. Moved by Kara, seconded by Jack. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are you old, Miss Sarah? May I just may I ask a question about the school improvement? Yes, you may. JFK? Of course. Yeah, yeah you can. Yeah. Did you meet goal four from last year, Carol, and that's why it's gone? Yes. Okay. Well, well, yes. Um, sort of. We, it um, had to do with um, capacity at the complex to consistently design and deliver high quality, rigorous tier one instruction aligned with Common Core. 
Yeah, I mean, we've aligned, we've aligned our instruction with Common Core. That the challenge here, I mean, if we're going to be honest, is that um, we, we are lacking resources. I mean, first thing that pops into my mind is science. We know that we don't have the resources. So teachers have been um, researching on their own, purchasing on their own, mm -hmm. but the, there's nothing consistent. Okay. I guess so, so. To their so credit, they're doing it, but, but sure. again, we don't have the resources available. So we're hesitant to put that in the, in the improvement plan going forward because mm -hmm. it's really a tough one. I mean, well, it, it's that conversation that you, the community, are asking us to do these things. The state is asking us to do it. But if we never fund anything that you put in here, then we can't really hold you accountable. And, and we have that conversation every time. Every time. So <laughs> I get it. I just didn't know if you did so well that it came out in that way. I, like well, I would say based stars. upon what we have, we did, we did really well. OK, thank you. Anything else on either any or of the above? And the reading <coughs> stuff you sent to us electronically? It's just our, yeah. our yeah. summer readings yeah. are the same. They're the same. Yeah. Uh, the only grade that's different is uh, grade five. Oh, so okay. for us, we have tornado by uh, the teacher prior. And um, yeah, why am I drawing a blank right now? Just um, t -t 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 Stone Fox. Yeah, Stone Fox. That's it. Sorry. And that's that's teacher chosen. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But other than that, we follow K through three and five. So the same. They're very similar. They're similar at the elementary level. It's not a lot of change there. And if you look at the kindergarten, it's really not a summer reading program for incoming kindergartners. It's more an information packet yeah, for read, the families. Get, yeah, read to so them. That's yeah. really what it's about. So, you, but okay. what's the summer reading for a four and a half year old? Yeah. <laughs> read to them. Take every day, yet. every day. Yeah. So that, read, read, obviously read. that one looks different. Uh -huh. Saw that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Lord. You got the book we got to read. Oh, Lord. Uh, where do you want to start with um, handbook? Handbook? Handbook for the middle school? Oh, so we. The highlights of the handbook? Yeah, I mean, we have very minimal changes. Most of the changes came with just some, some dates and name changes. And then there were quite a few policies the school committee set in place that are not. They were not in the handbook, so that's really what we have. Um, the only big you know, thing that we have is under personal electronic devices, there were some areas that were in bold, yet this new language section was not in bold, and I thought it was important, so I didn't know why we were pointing out just these two things and not this whole paragraph. Um, oh. I was and really then we confused. were just making, I'm sorry. I had been confused by that because I like read them both back to back and I was like, I don't see a difference. But <laughs> no, it was so just in bold. <laughs> yeah, I was like, but I didn't know how to, bold, how to put but that. But I didn't know so, that. Okay. Um, and then the bullying intervention plan, we just had that also equal out to what was our, is in the district policy that did not match up to ours. Okay. So I had to have a few uh, parents asked me, I think it was on uh, one of the honor roll breakfast mornings, um, if you were proposing a change to the honor roll requirements, it would have been in here as well, correct? Okay. But, so that that was rumors. Yeah, nobody's ever brought that up to me. Okay. Perfect. Well, it was, so we did it a few years just to meet the high school. We matched the high school. Oh, okay. So it, it, the way it is now, it would have to it does or it would not, make sense. It does not match the high It does match. Oh, okay. It didn't before. So, so when, during degree. my school council, we did try to look at some things to match the middle school and the high school, and, and most of it does. Really did. It's just in different order. I don't know. I would like to see if maybe there's a way to just do a secondary handbook. Um, then it would be middle and high together. Hmm. But, but I just didn't have enough time this year for that. <laughs> Oops. 
especially since when it comes to athletic, most of the students are playing JV. You know, we don't have a whole lot of just middle school only. And so that wanted some of that opened up the conversation. And so I, you know, I know the elementary, they all have one handbook. So if, the, if we're trying to be on the same page, we could just have the same handbook. Second. Moved by Tammy, seconded by Tara. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, uh, your reading and math I saw online. Um, and, and I would, well, it's not online. Or but you saw the What packet. sent to us. Okay. Online that was sent to us. Electronically, thank you. Um, and I, I would like to ask permission to plagiarize and steal the math packet. Well, you have to ask each of the grade level teachers. I will do so, so. They, they did create those, so the sixth graders teachers corrected, uh, created it based on incoming fifth grader being sure. review and so forth. Um, and we tried to keep at 40 problems each, so it was only one page front and back to limit the amount of um, pretty good copies. Very good, I think. It's impressive. Well, no, of, of knowledge. <laughs> Um, -E -E some people say that. <laughs> so just in quickly looking at the school improvement plan one of the things that you talk about using as a resource would be stars and if we don't have stars is there something because I know the middle school had used it well um, the 360 right. and now this talks about 180 but we won't have it at all is that what I'm well, I put, I, I don't know, maybe you didn't get the latest, I thought I gave the latest version. It said and star 180 and or similar online resources. So um, coming from somewhere where we always have to find stuff that's free, free. I've already told um, the elementary level. So there's a website called Prodigy. It's K-8 free. Um, kindergarten, it's great, especially first grade. My daughter uses it. So you go on and it works with you and it gives the not only the parent but the teacher the data but then it also talks so it gives word problems but she presses a little microphone and it reads it to her and then she can do the and it goes through this whole world and you get to cast spells um but you still get data back from that and it doesn't cost any money which i know love when loves yeah. Um, same love. same thing with, with English. There's a website called No Red Ink, and it's more grammar based and writing based. And you can get enough no data way. from the free version without having to pay for the, the paid version because it did start out free. Um, so that is something that we can use as well. Do you want me to go over the reading? Maybe. The reading is a little different this okay. year. Yeah. But, and I, and I do want to give um, very a huge thanks to the PTO because we wouldn't, our reading wouldn't be as help, you know, helpful to students if it wasn't for the PTO. So the PTO um, every year has paid for one school, one book. Okay. This year we're changing to one school, one theme though because I asked the PTO every year about how much they've spent on the one school, one book and they said about $3,000. I said, I can't tell you more than 40 students read the book. Based on the Google Classroom I made, that then became a disaster because fifth grade wasn't used to Google Classroom. They changed their password. Then when they came here, we didn't know what their passwords yeah. were. So we're not using Google Classroom this year. It will be that form online. Um, but the, So what I did is help the PTO bring down the cost to about $900. So when we have step-up day on June 6th, we did already visit the fifth grades down at the elementary school we gave them a little bit of a heads up but this book insignificant life of a cactus um the main character it's all about perseverance so that's our theme because um, this main character has no arms and so it's all about how she can persevere and then her friends who also have other um, disabilities and how they make it through plus it's a pretty good mystery not sure an eighth grader would want to read it though being a former english teacher I really like to give choice to the students, but we didn't want the fifth graders not to have the experience coming here as everyone else. It was also a huge deal with Scholastic, so I got five books for like cheaper than yours, because there's an extra special five book pack. I reached out to the author um, via email on her website. 
And so she has donated graciously for free signed book plates for mm -hmm. every single one of our books. She also gave um, the PDF file so that I could have the print shop at the high school make us bookmarks. Mm -hmm. And then what they did on the back is have important dates because um, even though I won't be new next year, the, I am still new to the incoming fifth graders. So I'm going to do meet and greets for the incoming fifth graders again so they get to meet each other for an hour. Plus just tells the open door days and about what they have to do for the reading. And then she is also going to Skype with us for free. So we still will have a Skype session. And we can only do that because this is only like her second book. So once she gets really famous, I'm sure she'll start charging. <laughs> um, so we did the similar thing for the high school, but I mean, sorry, for grade seven and eight. But what we're doing is that we have books um, I purchased myself to be able to cover them so that they would laugh last. Mrs. Tasker helped me out graciously. And so the library has bought, I mean, the PTO bought copies so that from the main office, the, t the students, I'm going to give them out the last day to the students who signed up first, but then they would return them to the main office and other students can check them out. That's how it's been working at the high school. But I also spoke with and have been working with uh, Karen Del Vecchio, the new young adult uh, librarian at the library. And so the library has made sure that they have extra copies. All these books are not very, very new. They, so there are plenty of copies and they will show students how to go in and re request them from other libraries. Um, and she will also keep um, some of the packet information there too. So if, if it's eight o'clock and they want the information they can get at the library. So Esperanza Rising, we were able to get a lot of copies because at Scholastic it was only 99, 95 cents. Mm -hmm. um, and then what the seventh and the eighth grade teachers did is that they p picked three le tiers. So one that's kind of a lower level reading, one that's at level, and one that may be a little high. And then Chains by Laurie Alice Henderson. And Between Shades of Gray, it's not, it has between in the beginning. <laughs> so, <laughs> Everyone confuses it, and I feel really bad because it's an amazing book, um, and it's all about the struggles of the people in Lithuania during World War II, and it's not a topic that's normally spoken about. The eighth grade it picked A Night Divided, which again, it has to do with World War II, but not really because it's about the Berlin Wall and wanting it to come down um, while it was up, so that time period's not usually. This one's more of a memoir of The Boy Who Harnessed Wind, and it was co-written from the gentleman from Africa, um, William Kim Kwabi, I'm not sure. And then this one, The Running Dream, is um, about a girl who loses her leg. And this was written actually just after the Boston Marathon. Oh, wow. So um, those are the ones that the PTO has bought. And then these, the students will be able to use. But then... As you can see, some of them are already barked. So a number, a great deal of these are coming come back to our library. And then others, like this one, will be donated to the teacher classroom. So the teachers will be able to have some of these copies after. Great. Great. Appreciate that effort. I'm sure. Huge effort on your part. Any other questions for Tanya? Well. I uh, know we will see you again at other meetings, but I hope that your first year was a good one. I know that there were hurdles, and I know that there were triumphs, and there were probably some frustrations. It's a tough year to have to face a budget like this going forward, but um, I think of, I think I of anyone, though. I, I probably effort. have gone through it more than others. Yeah. <laughs> they said, well, and I said, well, talk about like five, six, seven million. That's what, what I was used to, but it's all relative because it was a bigger budget. I appreciate that you stepped up to a lot of challenges you've been given this year. So thank you. Uh, thank you. And thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Baiko. Can the co curriculum activities change in Baiko? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, sorry. Which one do you want to do first? So the co curricular and extracurricular activities file JJ. Hard to read, but the, it's shaded lightly the second half of the first paragraph. That's what we had to add in to correct our criterion review on the CPR. So we just had to add that in and just needed the committee to approve that. So moved. Moved by whom? Tammy? Sure. Second. Second by Jack. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, was there any dissent? Oh, yes. Kathy's still here. 
And I and I think Jesse's probably still here. Uh, reappointment of the superintendent to Bico. This we do every year, and um, it simply will read that Dr. Jason DeFalco was appointed to serve as the Blackstone Mobile representative. Uh, on the board of directors of the Bike County Collaborative in accordance with MGL 40 Section 4E. And we just need to submit this to BICO um, with a vote from the school committee. Appointing Dr. DeFalco for next year. You want to make that motion? So moved. So moved by Tara. Second. Second by Tara. Ooh, that rhymes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> okay. Uh, Thank you very much. I think that ends my report. Good. Okay. Um, no, yeah, we're not done yet. June fifth, um, the joint meeting with Millville. At the time has been set. Um, oh, is it five? I wrote it down. Five thirty. Five. I think five o'clock. Five thirty. Five thirty. We said. No, June fifth. Oh, no, June fifth. June fifth. June fifth. Yeah. Alan's, Alan's talking about me. <laughs> Five o'clock. The June meeting with the Blackstone Board of Selectmen and FinCom, Millville Board of Selectmen and FinCom, Department of Local Services, Department of Special or Secondary well, Education, Department of Ed, and um, all of us. And Jason will be present. Five o'clock, June fifth, right here. Oh, it's here. Here. It still says. <laughs> Where? TBD. Oh well, yeah. Yep. That's five o'clock middle school, June fifth. June fifth. All right, and then Sarah. Um. Okay. Mm -hmm. So many Massachusetts school committees and city councils have been passing resolutions in support of fully funding the recommendations of the Foundation Budget Review Commission. I looked at the list and we weren't on there. So I wanted to bring it to the committee for a vote. You need me to read it? It's in your packet. Um, yeah, I read it. I read it. I read it. Right here. Oh, right here, right in front of me. Got it. Um, so we can propose it as written. Yes. That. that sounds great. <laughs> and it was written, Sarah, just it. the way everybody else is. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm it. Not that I don't trust your it was, I mean, it, it was proposed a while back. I mean, most of the school committees that I looked up had already passed resolutions, like in 2016. Did we, we actually it, send this to anybody? Is it, it looks so fish, official? Well, I didn't type it. Oh, but I was can, rigid. <laughs> but um, but we, need we could, it. I suppose, make a motion to send it to the see. Yeah. for sure the and town, to the state house. Yeah, and I mean to see if the Senator town. Dude, would a selectman want to do it? Express mail. I could frame it. <laughs> frame it, put it over there. Yeah, over there. Yes, to sign. So it's been moved by Sarah. Is there a second? Second. Second by Tammy. That we accept the resolution calling for full funding of the Foundation Budget Review Commission's recommendations. And forwarding to those necessary. And forwarded to any. All pertinent parties. All pertinent parties. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. All right. Members. Tammy, you got anything? Good luck to the track team on Saturday. Where are they? They are at Fitchburg, Fitchburg Fitch. University, State University. FSU version FSU. 2. There you yeah, because there's um, Framingham for, State too. But. I guess it's regionals or something. Florida State. I think it's state. It's not all state, but it's state because I have a couple friends doing it. Yeah, it's like one before the end. Yeah, I think that we had, we're in the high jump of the four by four hundred. I'm sure Alexa is going with her javelin. Alexa is currently sixth in javelin. Good in the luck to her. Sounds awesome. Be exciting. That's great. Anything else? That's it for me. Sarah. I just want to say congratulations and good luck to the seniors next week. I'm looking forward to awards night. Um, unfortunately, I can't go to graduation this year, but um, I'm sad to miss it. But good luck and good wishes to all of them. Um, just, you know, the budget um, is obviously a very um, big deal right now, and I hope we can get through it on Wednesday <laughs> and still be on speaking terms with each other as well as the community. <laughs> um, that's it. Aaron. 
What do we hope to accomplish on Wednesday? We're going to have the motion for well, research. We'll, we'll know the Millville. Uh, Millville. The, Blackstone. Oh, Millville. the Blackstone number. We'll know the Blackstone number. So we'll, we'll recertify to bottom line numbers. And then if it has to go. Recertify by. Um, cost center. Cost center. I keep wanting to say case number. <laughs> Although we really can't. We can't do that till we agree what we do. Right. right. We may or may not get to that. Right. Wait on Wednesday. But we've got to get to a recertified bottom line because we need to get back to whatever towns to get meetings moving forward. Right. But we approved it as cost centers. So yes, yes, we did. It's going to receive another motion. Conversation. <laughs> it's, you're like, well, we just. So I think we can. I think we. I think we could. Should we amend my motion that our final recertification will be by cost center? Yes. Whatever date that may be. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Monique, if you didn't get that, we'll figure it out. It took oh. me a minute, but I, I got it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're going to so recertify to budget, send to Millville. To send to or or, or, or just recertify or whatever, whoever. We're just recertifying. Then, you're recertify or whatever, and then and and then we will definitely when we know our numbers, whether coming back from Millville or Millville declines or Super Town meeting or whatever, we will certify by cost. Center. We actually don't have if if Blackstone only um, approves the seven ninety seven, we don't have to recertify in Wednesday. In a timely manner, we, we can work on this and then recertify by cost center Correct. because we're not in, on a timeline to send right. anything. So if Black, yes, if Black only does the Millville, then we have a, the Millville we will amount. have a budget when. I we don't recertify. think the numbers we know. I want to look at that again. The numbers I have don't match, but um, I just want to make sure that like who changed the number? The board of selectmen and the finance committee with the town treasurer in Millville. In Millville. In Millville. Okay. Okay. That wasn't on the handout we got. Was it changed after yes. town meeting? Yes. Okay. All right. So as long as it's okay, I just have town meeting so numbers. <laughs> oh, I don't know that anybody knows. The one that was two thousand dollars less. It was that difference. Yeah, I don't know that. Right, because they talked about having to come back to fix the number. Right. No. So we're we're good. Okay. So so to the Blackstone hundred thousand, mm -hmm. the board of the finance committee. Is going to recommend the eight ninety seven. The I, I don't want to say extra hundred thousand because it's minus <laughs> one point something million. Yeah. But, I, but that additional number. So the only so Alan will last year you in your office drafted a proposed amendment. But we would only need an amendment if the board of selectmen of Blackstone moves to amend that number first no you just need to right. defeat the amendment yeah, you, just, you don't yeah. need your own amendment so so what will what i my understanding so and jack you may okay. know more but my understanding is the the finance committee's recommendation is what is on the warrant yes correct and then the so board of selectmen what's there uh, so if anybody theory. moves to reduce Someone that reduce you just have to defeat that amendment i got you we don't have to make any amendments or do anything at this point in time Gotcha. Okay. So that makes total sense. But then, but then, so our meeting on the thirtieth, we need to go through whether it's whether it's the list, whether it's the whether it, we have the. We need to get. We, we need, need to, to get another. We need to we digest. Need to we need to agree and disagree on these. Correct. And move forward and move forward and and another two hundred thousand. Is that is it an even two hundred thousand? Not well. Okay, or sixty. Yeah. Yeah. Potentially. That's already in here. So we're still working on it. If I need to make changes, I may change the number a little bit. If what? Sorry. So um, for example, I'm calling a vendor to negotiate the renewal rate. So if I change the number, I'll just send a email to you. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So when I apologize, I just want to clarify what this is. Um, it, when I when I asked for this today, I was asking for the starting point of the list. Did you take out everything that was on here? Is it is it already subtracted from here? Yeah. Okay. No. Except Jerry. I apologize. She's scary. Yeah. 
Thank you. So just so we know, so this is the one we're going to work off of on Wednesday night. So we're all looking at the same one so we can say a page number or whatnot. There's still a couple items I need to talk to the principals and to just, just to confirm. So if I make changes, I'll just send an email to Jen and the board. Um, so I, and, and one of my last things before I wish the seniors good luck. In regards we're to trying. that athletic, <laughs> We're not done, sorry. <laughs> In regards to the athletic conversation, yeah. I believe I made a motion that held the athletics at the 180. Do we have, no, I don't want you to dig it out now. But it, I believe it was a mo there was a motion. It was not a cut. It was just um, keeping them level funded. So I would like... I would like to research that, but I think it was a Wednesday night. I think it was in March, <laughs> and we were sitting over there. <laughs> so here's, here's, I know that's really. Bad. I remember there were two votes. There was one about athletics, yeah. and there wasn't. There was one about band. Athletics was approved. Band was not. So I or music. I, when I need to to understand what is in this budget mm -hmm. for like the music department that's the music department so like he said like there's teachers who teach music mm -hmm. there are you know um, the seventh grade band that is part of a curriculum type of a thing and then there are band music programs right. and then there is a, a, a there are stipends for band positions some of which are paid by BMMA if they're paying a stipend, and that's part of that person's salary, retirement, whatever, do we pay benefits on that? No, those um, stipends. I don't those see are any of those salary. stipends. What? So you pay all the, anything. And they're not. So they're, to, they're not actually employees. They're. It's not to Mr. Schaefer per se. These percussion instructors are are musicians from another town that come in and work with the kids at night in the cafeteria the the i think it has a lot to do with that word um this but used I just to be want to make sure we're, These that are they're not that, paying people who are also being paid by us it, i mean it could i guess it could go to one of our staff members but it's an, an additional position that they're paid for I, I, I understand know. that, but I don't it's know. It's not in here. It gets in their what retirement. Paying, it gets in there everything no. else. What this, what they're paying on this list is not, not in here. This, this forty-seven thousand dollars is in addition to ninety-five seven fifty-nine because this is what was paid and this do, year. And do do does the band somebody playing in the band not singing a class? Somebody playing in the band or the jazz band or the whatever that's extracurricular. Mm -hmm. Do they pay user fees? They do. They do. Certainly. And their user fees are separate than this $95,000? And they have access to them? Because what we didn't understand with athletics. <laughs> I was waiting for the answer because this is the what same What we didn't understand with athletics is how can they yes. use user fees the and then offset everything. that. Yeah. And we don't want that to happen for athletics, but we have been the phased user fees and it can offset the, the band budget. Right? Am I am I misunderstanding? Yes. Do you, Kathy, the said uh, till it's ten thirty at night. Come on up. <sighs> Does anybody object to Kathy talking? No. 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 <laughs> sorry, that's why I asked. Um, I'm sorry. Ask the question again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have had discussions here about athletic. We we have a, a general revenue fund budget. Yes, that's the budget we pay for. Pay yes. for. We operate under we whatever. And in that budget, there's a hundred and eighty thousand dollars allocated to the athletic department. Okay. Okay. In addition, the and we charge user fees. Yes. And user fees helps to offset athletic expenses. Yes. And what the motion that was made, as I understand it, was that the athletic department would have $180,000 end of discussion. 
whether user fees or non-user fees or blah, 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 blah. So my question is, does the ban, meaning not to the not best Todd Schaefer to be a teacher at the school? To the best of my knowledge. So do they pay user Mar fees? If you are a part of marching band, yes. like marching band would be considered playing a sport. You play yes. base. You pay a user fee? You pay a user fee. Yes, I pay. Is that yeah. user fee used to offset the... So they don't have just ninety five thousand dollars. They have ninety five thousand dollars plus well, like user. twenty something thousand. Can I ask? Yeah. A, so that's where. Can that's I ask a silly we, question? Yes. That's how is we. how are the user fees split? And you don't have to tell me. I'm just curious that if if and I'm just using numbers. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Thirty percent are out of out of the band, and seventy percent are out of sports user fees because I pay a user fee for this son to Both. play. Right. Are they? They're, are you sep they're, they're separate, separate they're accounts. Sep that I know. That oh, I can answer. So they're user separate. fees for band are only used for band, for band. For band. expenses, yes. and right. user yeah. fees for sports That's are only used for sports. Correct. Very prescriptive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That was where my question was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, going back to your other question, the numbers that you see on the top, the ancillary. 40. Yeah. Ancillary. Yes. Ancillary. Thank you. Um, <laughs> are purely paid. Um, they we issue a 1099, which means they do not go through um, BMRSD. They, their they don't count they towards do their anything. retirement. They don't get taxes taken out. It is their responsibility at the end of the year to that. show like that we get with our, show that like, information, mm -hmm. and we report to the state and the federal government that we paid it on a 1099. Yeah. But they are, for the most part, like she said, percussion teachers who come and um, teach. In but this is not this user isn't, fees. This, this is, is the money no. you guys raise, mm -hmm. like working at Gillette and stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? Yes, any yeah. money that is sitting on that sheet, which was, I detailed out about $47,000. Yeah. Correct. There are little, in, there's more, but that was those right. are the big ones um, are paid by any fundraising that we that make. We do. don't, the user fees don't come to us. We're purely a 5013C. Any money that is paid out of that is purely fundraised by us, to the best of my knowledge. I'm like two weeks into being treasurer, so <laughs> uh, to the best of my knowledge, all money is uh, raised by us. There are times where things are split between um, school, but the school budget and us, but anything that we pay out is purely that money, and it is raised via Gillette. Oh. Volunteers are hard to come by. You yeah, you know, you know the story. I did it. Yeah, <laughs> I did it. Um, so yes, and. With every passing year, those numbers, as I've looked at our tax returns, have gotten higher and higher that we pay out to help the band. Yep. Okay. So Tara has the motion. <laughs> and I'm happy to report that I didn't actually make the motion. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought I did. So the conversation was, the, it Thank says you, discussion Kevin. is an increase from FY18's budget for 119,792, committee agrees not to raise user fees. So we, we talked about sports. Right. Right. Um, motion made by Diane to fund from general revenue funds at $180,000, second by Tara, and it was voted on. However, this wasn't a reduction I that I feel that counts towards any of this list. this was on february 26 we did not have a working list um and all we were doing was holding the requested budget to be level funded with what it was at this this budget year mm -hmm. um so again i bring that that it need something needs to equal out here whether it's putting that music money back in and leaving athletics as it is, and leaving both of them as they are, because they did take that twenty percent last year. Um, but band is the or not band athletics is the only thing that we reduced yep. back then during that round. Um, but we didn't. But we that's oh, okay. Music, but that's the only thing that we modified to the negative. <laughs> their, <laughs> they mo they re they put their twenty percent back in. Music didn't. Had he done that, had he presented a budget that put his 20% back in that we did live with this year, we would have been making that same motion or keeping them both the same. But There's also a motion on there to not fund Chromebooks. But isn't, <laughs> but isn't not using the additional 
will user fees above the 180 actually affect? And that, but that's not on here. What? It that's says to, here. to it's fund from general fund. Gen, that's, that's a general, so there's nothing on here about the. Her budget, their budget's 255000 Who's there? Athletics. Okay. We are only funding 180000 of it. An extra copy, you can have it. Um, I think it's too late for the athletics ban conversation right now. I just want to put it out there for, for my and question was try the to figure um, it out again. And for some reason, we just can't. I just I want to make sure we address it's it online. Like, why is it so complicated? <laughs> and with that, I'll just wish the seniors good luck at their graduation and years beyond. And I'm glad I can be there this year. That's it. Thank you. Jack, you got anything? <laughs> Nope, not much. I have one more. Okay. Although, at this point, I don't even know. The Senate budget debate took place, and an amendment to increase regional transportation to 80 per Well, there was one to fully fund. It didn't make it. Um, but to bump it up to 80% reimbursement passed that round. So now it goes on to reconciliation between the two I don't know what that would put us at I tried to find it but I thought it was like a six million increase on the regional trans transportation I don't know if it's 80% oh, it's two went to 68 no, okay. that does this that's for this year yeah right yep. right this year right yeah the additional revenues realized from 18. Right. Was it 80 percent? Where did I get I that? I didn't hear then? that percentage, but I only hear the number from 62, 62 million to 60 million. Yeah. Which would be far less. Don't ask me to do math <laughs> ever, <laughs> let alone right now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Again, I would like to thank Jessica and Anita for their service. Um, it's important that we have student voice, and I think that as we move forward, we should um, look to have students more um, involved in uh, <coughs> discussions and maybe even have them stay for um, some of the discussion. Because as Anita said, um, you know, she was impacted greatly by the opportunity she had here and so we need to hear from the students of what a difference this place makes to them so maybe they can participate more uh, I'd also like to in the future um, include something on our agenda call, called um, communications so that if we receive letters from um, people around and about um, that we can talk about them before any one individual person responds to them um, because I know we've had some and we want to talk about them, so we'll put it on our agendas to talk about them. And that's, thank you everyone for making it to almost 11 o'clock. Hearing nothing else, motion to adjourn.